No, he was he was flaming me, and TJ didn't have my back or nothing. Bro, you started the whole. I didn't start it though. You wasn't there. That's what it was. <laughs> you started the whole thing about his boots. You started making fun about yeah, his start, boots. You came in here and called him a cowboy. You said he looked yeah. like Morgan Wallen. No, no, that is no. So I'm up. trying to tell you guys. Listen, please listen to me. I'm okay, gonna tell okay. the honest truth. Okay. As soon as I walked in, Nicky Rock flamed me about my pants. He said, "Damn, right, babe, what you doing? You wearing some blue lingerie?" I'm like, "What?" Nicky Rod is a monster and just stand up and show the people you're wearing Honey Brigette. It's a lingerie <laughs> brand for girls. You made it into jeans. That's not true. This is <laughs> this is Val Valabasis, all right? This name is the brand, okay? okay. I, I'm sorry to be plugging in, but I have to. You know why? Because they are Memphis brand and that's where I'm from. Oh, I thought it yeah, was yeah. Calabasas. No, no, they, I don't know. I asked them about that. But Wait, they, stand up again. Stand up again. I want to see them because if they are really like a nice brand, I want to see them. Maybe I'll buy them. You know I like jeans. Stand up again. I'll no, show you, you my no, jeans. You, they, you trolling me. I'll show you <laughs> mine. You show me yours. Most of the- What? <laughs> what? Is that bad? Hey, yo. <laughs> Whoa, chill. You always be doing weird stuff. Let me see. No, TJ, I told you he don't look like a blueberry because blueberry is all blue. He got white, blue, white, blue. What do you mean? I'm not supposed to laugh at you. But you texted me that. You said, yo, Red Face look like a blueberry. Today. I said, nah, he looked like a tiramisu cake. <laughs> Just all blue, white, blue, white. <laughs> Are we good or no? Yo, See, you the man. You know I love you. You the man. What's up? Hey, I, I'm gonna tell you something. We just did it. We just did a, a podcast with uh, Leoto the Dragon Machida. Oh yeah. And he was caressing Leoto's knuckle. Oh my. Okay. He was. Uh, hey, hey, bro. When when it comes, okay. I got proof. I got proof. I got dog, proof. I'm dog, just saying. I watched you feed Shannon Briggs a chicken wing in his mouth at David Mustard. Nobody there. I love that. you in the Briggs stuff, yeah. man. How real no, is did that? Did that happen or no? I hope so. Uh, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for them to sign a contract in Saudi Arabia. Oh, you did feed him chicken wings. No, I didn't say. Oh, I didn't say. I hope so. Like you, you. Think no, about you that. Trying, no, he said I love it. He you said like you say. I think about that. Like I, you said, I hope I can feed Shannon. I hope so. You guys, I, I, gonna, you guys are gonna fight? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, we ready to do this? Are we? Are we rolling? We've been rolling. All right, are we, we're oh, here. Damn, we live. Yeah, I had no clue. Listen, lie. man, he flaming me. <laughs> no, we wasn't. We wasn't doing flaming anything. me, We're man. Showing you support. Listen, just talking about your panties pants, dude. Your panties, panty pants, dude. Oh, pants. I got some. Hey, I got some white ones like this too, and Leave they go hard. Home. Leave them at home. <laughs> hey, real talk. It's not it. Let's go back to the cargo no, pants cool. and, and the camo. Hey, hey. TJ, don't say that. No, 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 no. no. Okay, okay. I'll bullshit. I'll bullshit the side. You, you know when you tell me, yo, bear, a uh, fighting name for you, and I say, why you go, you don't know how to fight? I'm gonna be honest. Those pants ain't. For when, me. when did I tell you that? <laughs> When I encourage you. When, when you had you got me a lot better. Your striking got a lot better. You had me just kick in front of Leota Machida. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then I did, TJ yeah. said, Yo, bear, fall back. <laughs> but but TJ said, though. Know. Okay, I'll, I'll, real talk, though. Real talk, 100%. You're not feeling my pants. I would never feel you, dog. No, no, no. Not, not, oh. not come, on, come on. My pants, it ain't it. No, it ain't. Man, I don't hate him. I don't hate him, though. Hey, it's better I gotta, than what I, you were hey, wearing. I got before. a jacket to go with it, too, right? The Matching? Whole, yeah, full set, right? But the jacket a little bit too no, tight. No, leave the jacket at home. I'm not even gonna lie. I ordered it on last two XL. That a little bit. Hey, but he does have crazy drip lately. Everything matches. He's got crazy boots. Mm -hmm. He just got these new Prada joints. I go, damn, it's nice. You out here? What? Come on, man. Let's get on. Let's get, get on. No, I'm, just, I'm just gassing you up a little bit. You no, need it. Man. The fans have been saying you look fight ready. You're getting in shape. You look great. What's up with that? So let me. Let me. Just I got. I, I, real talk. I, I. I got. I got tired of being fat. Look. <laughs> What's look. that have to do with style? No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Because when I'm fat, I don't dress right. Oh. And it's, it's hard to find something to fit. Look, I train, I told you, I trained with TJ and 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 Juan Archuleta for my last fight. And they witnessed it, you know what I'm saying? I was unhealthy. Uh Coach Cal helped me out, didn't he? Oh yeah. He changed my life. He man. did, dude, for sure. I just wish I wish I would have met him and started training with him probably like maybe eight months before. Yeah, yeah. And even sooner than that, you could have like prolonged a lot of stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, well, I'm let's, glad let, I'm let's break this up real quick. Let's let them know what we're doing. Uh, so we we got, I don't know what the fuck we doing. Okay, <laughs> so there's He's a list here. Blueberry. There's a list here. Of the top thirty fighters. We got twenty seven on here. Uh, Jackson House put together a list of the top thirty fighters in the UFC because what's thirty year anniversary? Yeah, it's the thirtieth anniversary of UFC. Right, they're celebrating thirty years or something like that. Big three zero. Okay, and okay. you guys are both UFC champions. Mm -hmm. So we had all the fighters. We had a bunch of people come through. We had a bunch of uh, you know fighters, trainers, everybody that's been here at the Jackson house. And we said, Hey guys, on the Jackson podcast, we got TJ Dillashaw on rampage next week. What do you guys think would be your top 30? We let everybody ride it. Mm -hmm. And out of all the pro UFC fighters, people with belts, this is what kind of the consensus 
everybody came up with. Okay, my problem is it's not 30 fighters on this list. It's only 27. Well, we're, <laughs> we're going <laughs> to <start, laughs> <what? laughs> start at 30, and we left the last three spots open. So we'll start with those three first, or we could save those and let the fans you know, kind of give their input at the end of the show. So we could start at 27 and we'll let the fans tell us in the comments who should fill up those last three. Okay. Spots. Okay. All I right, like that. Right, yeah. Okay. So, like and, that. and TJ obviously being one of the most brilliant minds in UFC history and MMA, um, this is strictly UFC. So I want to be very clear for everybody at home who's going to try to attack me in the comments. Actually, we do have an amazing community. They don't really attack and they've actually been very positive about all of our videos. So I do want to congratulate them on that, building a nice friendly community. This will bring in a lot of new visitors, I'm sure. So let's make sure we keep it positive in the comments and let's make sure we all, you know, respect you, people's opinions, Rampage. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I'm with you on that, but I don't think no one could attack you on this because this is for the UFC 30, 30-year anniversary, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But haven't they been celebrating that for at least a year now? Ain't it 31 years by now? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I, I, excuse me, I'm bad with time. But Obviously, I don't know the month. Yeah, right? me either. I'm not sure on the month. I think it's the actual whole year. You know? Oh, so they're doing it for the whole, oh, yeah, the whole year. Oh, I'm right. dumb. That makes sense. Because, yeah. I mean, back in the day, it was just uh, pretty much like one card, you know, right, for the right. whole year. Right. And there's tournament style, you know? Right. So I noticed they had those 30 on the gloves mm -hmm. for a long time. I, I felt like it's been over a year. But I guess they're going, I guess they, when you know it's, the year's almost up, so twenty twenty four, they they're not gonna have the yeah. thirty on the gloves. No, uh -uh. Oh, okay. And then and then obviously we're gonna be pulling up videos. So I have the tech guy right here. <clears throat> we're gonna be pulling up videos too in case Rampage and TJ. In case you guys wanna you know watch some clips or remind yourself of some of these moments. All right. Um, we're gonna kind of just mob through this and let's see let's see what the people think. So for number twenty seven, we're gonna start off with Valentina Shashenko, UFC flyweight champion, women's flyweight record, eight defenses, exceptional striking. Well-rounded skills, obviously one of the most influential female fighters in the game. Dominant performances in her weight class. Clearly, we, we want to kick this off with someone who's experienced, someone who won. But at the same time, I think title defenses count. Okay. What do we think? Well, uh, is that I, is that the girl that dances at the end of her yes. fight? Yes. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't be on the list just for, for that. For just me. for dancing. Just for the dance. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I, fuck that. I, I mean, I, I like that she's on the list because she's one of those fighters that for a woman. You got to be afraid she's going to knock someone out, right? There's a lot of girl fights where they can just go forever. No one's going to get knocked out. No one's going to get finished. Not with Valentina. Valentina can can knock you out. You've seen it multiple times. She's a great fighter. You know, she belongs there in the cage. She belongs, you know, uh, in, in the Hall of Fame maybe one day. But she don't belong on a dance floor. <laughs> She needs to. She needs to. Lead, she needs to. Lead, she needs to do something. She needs to celebrate her wins another way. <laughs> that's her thing, dude. That's her. That's her calling. That's uh, her. That's her it. thing, though. She can't change it up now. It's uh -huh. like if someone said Rampage shouldn't be on American Idol because he can't howl. Like you go, ow, you know, same thing. But like, I can howl though. Let me see. That, I, yeah, you can't put me on the spot like that. But you could still do it. I'm a wolf. I'm a. I'm. I'm an actual werewolf. In what way? Bro, we need a Jackson Rampage chain, like the big chain he'd walk out with, but be Jackson. Bro, do you know how expensive that would be? That'd be sick. Yeah, it'd be like, been, it'd be like 500 grand. You deserve grand. it. Yeah, that'd be dope, bro. It'd be, sick. It'd be like yeah. 500 grand. Yeah, I, I've already tried, <laughs> I've already looked into it. Yeah. It's so, so expensive. So expensive. We can't. Yeah, and what if somebody, you know, it's out the budget. Going, it's it's out the budget. Chain, so. well, don't be DJ, wearing don't, that shit around. Don't get my idea. <laughs> don't be wearing it. Don't, don't get my idea. Okay, it's out the budget. We just yeah. had to buy new lighting for Rampage. Because <laughs> I'm so dark. You know, no, no, because you said you don't like the angle. See how we always try to turn it? All right. See, yeah, why, but why, why, why was that so funny, though? Because <laughs> you're funny as fuck. Yeah, you are funny. You're, you're like Kevin Hart. Yeah. You're like Kevin Hart. You're like a funny guy, you know? You, you feel that, TJ? Yeah. 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 I mean, he's one of my favorite people to hang out with, man. He always makes me laugh. Like, we used to go to the training lab and work out in the garage, and no one's laughing in the garage. That place is a horrible place. I love it, but it's horrible. Like, <laughs> it you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna get your ass kicked there. You're going to be tired as fuck. But the time that Rampage came and worked out with his first fight camp, it was the funnest time I had in that garage. Number 26, Kamaru Ishman. Who? Ishman. Usman. Usman. Number twenty six, Kamaru Usman. I love, I, I love, I love that name. It's a, it, you know, it just rolls off your tongue. It's a. You know who he is? Yeah, I know, I know who he is. I'm gonna <laughs> tell you, I'm gonna tell you. First time I met him, I bumped into Rashad Evans. He's Rashad's boy, right? Mm -hmm. I bumped into Rashad Evans at a nightclub in Miami, and I thought we was about to, you know, go at it. And 
He was with him. Kamar, how you say it? Kamaru. Kamaru Usman. You were going to fight Usman in Vegas? No. no. If he were, if Rashad, but if, yeah. if Kamaru would have jumped in, he could have got these hands too. <laughs> but but he wasn't champion back then when I met him. I, I didn't I, I didn't recognize. I didn't know who he was. I didn't. I, I, he looked like a fighter, but I didn't, I didn't mm-hmm. know he was a fighter. But since then, I'm telling you, the kid came out of the shadows. He came out of, out of like nowhere, you know, so he took the um, sport by a storm and yeah. and and um he he has like uh he has a, a great fight style. I'm a big fan of his now. But to, you would have gave him the hands. I would have gave him hands in Miami though. If if <laughs> if me and Rashad would have went at it, he would have jumped in, he could have he could have got these hands that night. Yeah, he, Rashad and, and Usman. Both of them could have got. It. I would have laid them both out. Like, boom! <laughs> boom! <laughs> Why, why y'all laughing? I look at me. I'm, I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> dead serious. I'm dead serious. <laughs> I guess that's why we're laughing. <laughs> Man, Kamal Usman had a sick win streak, though. You know what I mean? Like until he got beat, beat by Leon, which he was winning that fight too. Right? Head won. kick, bang. Was winning all rounds of that one, and then got head kick knocked out. And I, I thought for sure he was going to win the rematch, right? Um, which is amazing by Edwards. I mean, Edwards is champ now and he's fighting what this weekend so um but Kamaru is <clears throat> very he's just so big too for the weight class wait wait wait, wait. Uh, rewind they, they rematch after the head kick mm-hmm. and then this, how did I miss that one and then the rematch Edwards just beat him bad like yeah. beat him like four rounds no way it yeah. probably was in his head about yeah. the head kick yeah I guess so can, you think he can come back from that uh, I think he's just got so much other stuff going on you know he's in movies he's got all this stuff I mean, he's made good money he's I mean I feel like when a lot of guys, they lose the hunger, right? They don't need, they don't need to win. Like, you know, when I went out and beat Burrell, like I needed to win. You know what I mean? Mm. Like I was only getting paid eighteen thousand to show and eighteen thousand dollars to win. I needed that paycheck. You know Do you know I mean? who Stephen Quattro's is? Mm. Uh, he used to be the commentator for Pride back in the day. Him and Boss, okay. Boss, Boss Rudin. And he told me something a long time ago. He told me, "Don't do movies while you fight." Mm. He said, uh, "It's a curse." Oh, really? Yeah. All and, right. and Right after I did A-Team, I had to fight Rashad Evans right out there. Went straight from the movie set and went straight to the training camp. Yeah. Lost. And even boxers, um, Tal- Talver, did, he did had one little scene in, in, in uh, Rocky. Lost. Same thing with uh, Lennox Lewis. When he he did one, one, one scene in um, that Casino Heist movie, um, Ocean's Eleven, whatever. Okay. Lost. And every time a, 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 a fighter do a movie and stuff like that, they come back and they lose. When did McGregor film Roadhouse? Was that after he broke oh, his leg? Wow. Was that after he broke his leg? Wow. Yeah, I think it was after. Yeah. That's a good, that, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. Stephen like, Quattro, that, that, that always stuck with me. <clears throat> Stephen Quattro told me, and I, I didn't listen to him because you can't pass up on certain things. No, movies. hell no. You don't, you don't yeah. think about that. So yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't know that it had a rematch. <clears throat> I mean, I don't feel like. He came out swinging. I don't feel like he was himself, right? He was like kind of stuck in a shell. Didn't seem like he could get anything working. And it seemed like Leon kind of was bullying him a little bit. He was, dude. And Carl's just so much bigger. His wrestling's more relieved. He didn't like, try to take him down? Uh, he did, but I was impressed with Stop. Edwards' like, takedown defense, man. Well, what Which, about Usman's fight against that that Chaka Chaka dude with the, with the beard? What's his name? K- K- <laughs> Kachaka Shemayev. Shemayev? That's his did name. He fight, did he fight Shemayev? Was like, that Shemayev? Did he and, fight and him? He fought, he fought somebody, one of those bearded yeah, he dudes. He fought and, Kamza Tramov on a, on a late, on a oh, late. Oh, yeah. He did, and he looked great. He did good. Because he was supposed to fight Paul Acosta. Paul Acosta got staph infection. That's next right. Thing you know, I forgot about that yeah, fight. Yeah, it was. A, but listen. Did you watch it? I didn't watch it, no. I mean, bro, he was training with Gilbert Burns like a few days before. I think he even got offered or something, and they were showing him in Florida, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, bro, it was a late, late notice fight, and you're fighting one of the best in the world right and he now. Did, and he did a great job, I thought. Yeah, he did good. He did. Uh, I mean, you're just not in shape, right? You're going right. to get worn out. I think if he was in shape, he would have won. He had power for sure mm. for not being in shape. Okay, so that was number 26. Who do we have at 26 again? Kamaro Uzman. Kamaro Uzman. Right, hit, us with, hit us with 25, Rampage. Me, me again? Yeah, yeah. You're reading all of them. Me and, me and TJ are just here to watch you. What the? F- <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. 25. Okay. Uh, Israel Anashanas. <laughs> what number is he? Oh, he's 25. <laughs> Israel Adesanya? How you say it? Adesanya. Adesanya? Yeah, Ades close. I'm out of, I'm out of Zanya. <laughs> out of lasagna. Out right? of lasagna. <laughs> Israel out of lasagna. Out of what? Out of lasagna. 
Why you say it all sexual like that? You think what? Like that? Was, <laughs> what the fuck? How is that sexual? Because you what? start licking your lips when you tell the time. Yeah, yeah, hungry. Oh my god! Stop. Damn! What the fuck? Uh, show is this now? You, right. you call him Style Bender. Style. Yeah. Oh, that's style a good bender. name. I, that's I met him in for the first time in Saudi Arabia. Okay. He oh, walked, you guys were just that. That was that was badass. Yeah, that was how dope. cool was that? That was cool as fuck. That's awesome. And it's dope. He walks in the room. I see him. Dude is a giant. Is he big? He's he's taller. He's than tall. Me. He's not like yeah, thick. But I, he 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 wasn't. Um, hey, yo, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know how I'll thick try, he is. I was trying to keep going. But <laughs> I don't know. I, why, I don't know how thick the man is. You feed him these layups. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how thick the man is, but but he he was. Well, I figured you knew. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't never getting through this list. Oh my god! Come on, twenty five. Come on. Okay, he he uh, was a great fighter. I like his style. And, you know he's a style bender. Mm-hmm. You know he got has great kickboxing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know what? What I liked about him though was his dancing. Mm. See when he comes like to like a b boy, right? Yeah, when he mm-hmm. comes to the when he came his interests and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Cool, cool dude. That shit was crazy when he did that before he fought Whitaker, like a full on performance before he fought with like, the mask. Think how like nervous you are before a fight, and you're like so focused on winning, getting out there performing for your fight. This fool does a full on dance choreographed with his guys behind him. Goes out there and performs, wins, gets the title. Yeah, sick. I couldn't do I couldn't do stuff like that before no. my fight. I, no. I, I'm not the same person. But I, if I had to pick a, a perfect fight and stuff like that, that would be one of the attributes. I'd be like, he has to be an entertainer as well. Mm. If I'm going to manage somebody, you know, if I'm going to build a fight and stuff like that, True. that that's that's the type of person that I would I would pick. And yeah. and he delivered every time. A win or lose, I like I liked his fights. And um and he even called out. And not the when big, he fought Yo Romero. That shit was boring. Oh, I, I guess I guess I didn't see. Ass fight. I guess I didn't see that one. Yeah, but dude, I'm super impressed with Style Bender because I mean, I met this guy out in Colorado when I first moved out there and was training. He just came out to the gym. He hadn't even had an MMA fight yet, I don't think. And I knew he's a kickboxer. Him trying to now make it in the MMA scene and how quick he did it. You know what I mean? Not only how quick he did, it, he had like so many title defenses and he got to the top. Like that was that was pretty impressive to me. You know? Do we consider him a, a future legend? Oh yes. I mean, He's talking about how he's taking this long break. I mean, I hope he doesn't. I hope he continues to to, to fight. You know, but it would break or not, I, I would confuse. I would I, I would consider him a, um, one of the goats, and um, I hope he get into the uh, Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's yeah. He went up. He went up a weight class and fight Yon. He got he got overpowered, but uh, you know, to give give that a shot was pretty good. Yeah, I think it's <clears> interesting <throat> though. One thing about Adesanya too is like I also saw this bill this video where he was uh, telling people like. You guys think I'm just doing a bunch of gang signs with my hands? No, I like practice these. These, this is my shaka or whatever. He's like, this is how I get my energy right. And it's all these like, he's like, I drill these, and it's all the things he does with his hands before the fight. And I thought that was interesting. I was like, man, this guy actually takes time to like understand what he's doing. It's all like, it's not just like, it's really him. It's authentic. Like he really loves this stuff that he does, and he feels like it empowers him. So I've always been a fan of him. I met him at Jake Paul's house after Jake Paul won a fight. He threw a massive party. I walk in with Bradley Martin and. Adesanya was there and we were all hanging out. He was really nice, nice to everybody. He's, he's very cool peaceful, dude. very cool. He's so. cool. He's a cool dude. I just don't like him painting his nails and wearing pearl <laughs> necklaces and stuff. I, <laughs> Pants that look, look like panties and stuff, you know. <laughs> was was that a dig on on on, on, on my Valor Bass's jeans that I'm wearing today, TJ? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, was it, be honest, but that was a dig, huh? Yeah. From, from here on out. You better like every outfit that you wear in front of me. <laughs> so it's open season on you, just so you know that. Fair enough. So well, I'll just always wear Jackson then because you there we go. talk shit. There we go. Settle down. You got to deal with me. Yeah, well, I, well, I can't say nothing about that. I wear this. I like it. I yeah, say he wears thing. it every day, actually. I, and, Good man. So this is my connection with Alessandra. Um, his, his Muay Thai coach or his kickboxing coach, one of his, I don't know how many he got, is uh, we. his name is Tonga. I can't pronounce his real name, so we call him Tonga. Years ago, when I was training at Team Punishment with Colin Oyama, uh, Tonga came from New Zealand and was training with us. He helped me train for a lot of fights. He's this big Tongan guy. And um, me and him stay in, in contact all these years. And uh, he's one of the funniest dudes I know. And uh, and I asked him about Anasanyas. And he was like, he's like, man, you know what? He's 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 a good kid, man. And, and he told me a little bit about him person, on a personal level. I'm like, all right. So I, I respect him and, and I'm an even bigger fan. So that's nice. a, like a little connection. I know somebody that, mm-hmm. that knows him. Yeah, it makes you want to get behind someone like that when you get that personal connection yeah you know? yeah you follow him you follow the crew, and you you root for them you know yeah. before we move on from him tj do you feel like he fought enough of enough champions enough good talent to be uh 
considered one of the best middleweight champions? I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. I always feel like people people ask that. Like, did they fight a good enough roster to get to the top? They always make that could be a bar argument. I'm sure we'll get there soon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he definitely did. He had some some great great wins over great champions. I mean, for him to go out and knock out um, Whitaker the way he did, you know? Yeah, it was I agree. Rampage, he he knocked that for Forrest Whitaker. No, uh, Whitaker um, from uh, Robert Whitaker. Uh uh-uh, uh okay. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. <laughs> Who do we Man, got this at? one here, number 24, is Frankie Edgar. Yeah. I think he should be up further on the list. Me personally. Mm. Um, you know, when I was even before I was when I was still wrestling in college, me watching Frankie Edgar and um what's that trilogy fight against Maynard? Just sick fights. And for him to be so small, it's before the UFC even had 45s or 135s. He was fighting 155s and he was little. I mean, he's like my size. You know, fighting 155 has become yeah, a world tiny. champion and very, very impressive. You know, he's a for sure a Hall of Famer. I think he should be further up on the list than 24, it, me personally. Is this list in some type of order? Yeah. No, it's in order. That's oh, what the oh, numbers oh, are. Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm showing my intelligence today. <laughs> we just went 27, 26, 25. Where we're going, we're yeah. going, dude. No, no, I just thought. <laughs> Uh, oh, can I say what I thought? Yeah, yeah. I thought since it was 30 fighters, y'all just wrote it down and it's just like, and we're going to lead three off so the fans could choose. I didn't know they was in like list of importance or, you know. Yeah, this is all just like, I mean, this is all just opinion based too, right? So these fans can come in and say like, hey, we don't agree with that either or, yeah. you know. All right. Who do we got? Twenty three rampage. What? What? Listen, I wasn't finished with Frank Eric. Oh, oh, let's I, hear it. I liked him because he had really good boxing. Oh, yeah. And yeah. wrestling. Great I liked boxer. Yeah, yep. I liked him. Yeah, oh. that boxing and wrestling combo back then too was plenty to be be the best. You what know? what about the heart? I know we talked about that before. Like oh yeah, heart. yeah, yeah. I mean, no one's got more. Really? I, really? I mean, dude, that guy. I mean, he got dropped, beat up by Maynard, and still just came back. You know, I mean, th- those are the those are the fights that really make you a fan of someone. I hated seeing the way his career kind of kept going, and mm-hmm. wish he would have stopped a little bit sooner. Personally. But um, super tough, yeah. And number twenty three, talking about heart, and you talking about boxing, Max Holloway. Yeah, damn man, he really impressed me with his with his boxing, his head movement, yep. and everything. I, I I like I like I like Max. Without, I think Max should be higher up on this list as well. <clears throat> He's one of those dominant champions. Long win streak, beat the best, like beat Jose Aldo what t- twice, maybe even three twice for sure. Um, if it wasn't for Alex Volkanovsky, which I actually think that he won one of those fights, um, and it, they gave the decision to Alex, I mean, he'd be even, even, even way higher up on the list. Me personally, is what I think. I definitely think something about Hallway, numerous fight of the night performances and fight of the night bonuses and stuff. And you don't just win those to win those; you win those because you put on a show no one could ever see. I feel like one thing about Max Holloway, you know, when you watch one of his fights, like you're watching a traditional. MMA fight, someone who's going to go out there and get bloody, someone who's going to get blood off someone, someone who's going to kind of sit there and just bang with him. But at the same time, he's not a guy who's like a brawler banger. He's a guy who's like, he still has technique when he does it, which I feel is like very hard to find nowadays. Mm-hmm. You either got a guy go in there, he gets beat up and he gets thrown out of there. There's blood everywhere, but he'll go in there and just piece up a guy, but he'll eat a few. And talking to Mighty Mouse on one of those podcasts we did recently, he said one of his worst fights he ever fought is when he just sat there and banged because he got all bloody and bleedy and his coach is like, yo, what's wrong with you? That's not how we fight. But one thing about Max, I feel like he thrives in those positions. When he's sitting there and he's feeling someone put the pressure on him, I feel like he just turns it to a whole nother level. Mm. Most people shut off. Yep. So I, I definitely think that this guy should be higher on the list. I, I, the one thing I do have to talk about him, whatever he does for his training camp, his cardio is on another level. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Insane. I don't know. Like, TJ, you know a lot about working out, obviously. Like, how does this guy have this type of cardio gas tank? Wait, 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 wait. Before you answer that, how come you didn't ask me about working out <laughs> and, and cardio? You know, it's like... Why are you laughing, though? <laughs> I'm just laughing because he looked at me when he said it, but why are you laughing so hard? <laughs> because he's taking it personal. <laughs> oh, you should ask him that. I didn't... I didn't. No, I just want... I asked you because you want to ask the question. All right, go ahead. Say, I don't want to hold... I know because we, we just did a podcast with Juan Archuleta and everybody's talking about how this guy just has more training technique okay. and training programs than anyone. And you were telling me you hate training. Okay. <laughs> don't you hate training? <laughs> but I do it, though. I know, but... 
You I a, eat you, vegetables, but I do it. You threw a hundred pound medicine ball at this guy's feet when the whole goal is to catch the medicine ball. Yeah, because he was cheating. They was cheating. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Um, All right, rampage. I think. Well, I think the reason why he's got the cardio that he does is yeah. it's multiple things. Not only just just the way you train. I mean, you got to learn to train the way your body type is built too. Like genetically, everyone's built different. Someone like Chad Mendez, he's just a big ball of fast twitch muscle. Like he's got to learn to train a low he's got to do a big time aerobic training getting on the bike running a lot of miles like he's got to get the right kind of energy system max holloway you can tell he's built for long distance he's um also he trains very hard and then you can tell too where the way guys breathe right <clears throat> you see those guys out there taking like shallow breaths all the time you see their chest moving you don't see that with max holloway you don't really see his chest moving when he's breathing and he's in a fight He's in, sitting in the corner. He's kind of calm, cool, and collected and keeping that energy for the fight rather than trying to recover in your breath. Like, <sighs> that's just going to make you tired, right? Instead of taking those, like, deep breaths through your nose and just relax. Yeah. And then and then in terms of rampage, in terms of the way the guy strikes, I know one thing you were telling me, mm -hmm. how you've been boxing with Coach Bobby. What do you think about his striking makes him so dangerous? Man, his striking, I, I believe, is on another level. I was watching one of his fights. I can't remember who his opponent was. But he wasn't even paying attention to the dude, and he was just like pepping him, just looking away, just talking to him. Oh, he's talking shit, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like, he was saying, "I'm the best boxer in the UFC," and I'm moving shit, and yeah, yeah. He his, was fighting uh, Cater, bro. His yeah. head movement. I was looking. I'm like, man, I was yeah. very impressed, and I like that. So you can tell that he really, um, he really took pride in his boxing and he really worked on it. And mm -hmm. that's why he was so passionate about saying he was the best boxer, even though he yep. was wrong because I'm the best boxer <laughs> in the UFC. But he was proud of I wasn't in the UFC at that time. So yeah, that's what it was. That's, right what, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. You bring up a great point too about you talking about cardio, but then also like the way he, he strikes and does boxing. Another reason why his cardio is so good is because he's kind of a, a, a volume fighter, right? You don't see him hitting one punch knockouts and being explosive and knocking people out with a head kick or spinning heel kick. He's, in your face nonstop. He's kind of like a Diaz mentality, right? Just, you can have great cardio when you're doing it that and way. And you learn that from boxing because boxing, yeah. boxers, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you ever paid attention. Like he said, they don't try to knock you out with every punch. They yeah. setting you up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so in MMA, we, we get in the habit of every punch we trying to end the fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because our because our rounds, I think it's because our rounds are five minutes, mm -hmm. right? Boxers, they got a three minute rounds, so they can, they can set you up. They're not trying to, they're not trying to gas themselves out. And mm -hmm. I think boxers, that I think most of them known for having better cardio. Just because of every shot is not a, a power power mm -hmm. punch. They yeah, and they throw hundreds sense. of punches mm -hmm. in each round, right? Oh yeah. And yeah. we and like like a, a boxer can go through a twelve round fight and get hit with like what a thousand punches or something like that. I haven't. I don't think I've taken a thousand punches in my whole career. <laughs> I don't know. I don't yeah, think but it, it makes sense, yeah, because you'll see a, at the end of a fight card, it'll be like Mayweather threw three hundred punches, landed you know. Tw tw 200 of them, whatever. Like, it's like high rated volume punch categories and counts, and they land a lot of them too. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of crazy to me because that is a good point. I've actually never looked at the actual amount of punches they throw like per round, but I'm pretretty positive it's nowhere close to boxing. Yeah, is, is um, UFC, did they start doing that yet? Counting? Oh, the they, they always, yeah, they've been doing that for a while. I haven't I have noticed yeah. that. Yeah, I remember I broke some records when I was fighting like Joe Soto. I had like an insane amount of uh, significant strikes. Um, but those are landed. Yeah. Do they yeah. count the ones thrown? I too? believe so. Yeah, because yeah, they do percentages. Yeah, oh, okay. significant yeah. strikes. I, 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 like Bobby Green has a crazy amount of significant mm -hmm. strikes. You know, he yeah, has a crazy yeah. record. <clears throat> oh, okay. But like, I've never seen it where they're just like, oh, he threw four hundred just punches. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's you kind don't of really weird. see that. Yeah. Who do we got at twenty two? So uh, this TJ? is this is exactly why like the last two guys they said should be higher up on the list because these these next two guys I feel like shouldn't be as high. I do think that they should be on here, but they shouldn't be this. I mean, they shouldn't be above Max Holloway and Frank Yeager. At 22, we have Uriah Faber, right? Personal stuff beside, like he's a very he's a pioneer of the sport for the lower weight classes, right? The reason why we got into the UFC at 135, 145 pound weight class is because of guys like Uriah Faber and, and the the character he was and the superstar he became, right, for the lower weight classes. But he never won a title, right? He had like eight chances and never won a title. I do think he's on here because of what he did for the sport, but he's definitely not ahead of Max Holloway or Frankie Edgar, guys that are UFC champions and had great win streaks and you know defended their belt a lot. Well, I'm not going to let you sit here and talk shit about um, Uriah Faber. Yeah. Because, number one, if anybody ever made fun of me, he would not laugh. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, he yeah. would. No, he would. No, he would. He's my boy. Number two, we started 
off in the, in the same time in King of the Cage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and and I knew that he was going to be something but great. But did I, did I talk shit? I yeah, just said, you just... No, I, you I, just... I, just no, 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 no. He said something that everybody always says about your yeah. FM. I will say right now, your Uriah Faber is a phenomenal fighter. Yeah. He paved the way. He popularized the lower weight class fighting. Mm -hmm. I agree. California kid. Dope style. But he did have... I think seven, seven or eight okay. title fights that he. I'm didn't just a little win. bit upset with TJ, so I assume, <laughs> I assume that he talked shit. I thought he said something about my boy's chin. <laughs> Oh, you did. Yeah, he, oh, you were I, talking about his facial. He said somebody's chance. He, I, I, I heard him say. He said that one time they was hanging out in a nightclub, and um, you ride paper asked a girl to toss his salad, and she licked his chin. <laughs> Where were you guys? Break it down so we have like an understanding, because I'm sure the fans would like to know. That's a great question. I don't know where we were. <laughs> <laughs> Why you say that about my boy, though? You know, Uriah Faber is the man. The California oh, kid. Oh, man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but you, yeah, but uh, you don't think he should be up there? He I was think he champion. should be on the list. I do think he should be on the list. He's a pioneer, right? He should definitely be here. But I just don't think he should. I mean, 22 is not bad, but he shouldn't be ahead of Max Holloway or Frankie Edgar. I mean, fuck, Kamaru Usman as well. Like, I think he should be further up as well, too. If you, you I mean, look, he's ahead of one, two, three, four UFC champions, right? Like... Yeah, you're good. You're you you've you you're popular, right? Same as the next one we're gonna talk about. Like he's popular, he's done great things for the sport, but you can't be ahead of four champions. How many or five champions? Sorry, one, two. How, how many times five have you champions. fought your ride? In the practice? I've never fought him in the because you cage. guys trained together. Yes, yeah, so right. was was it who's wrestling better? Be honest, keep it wrestling. Going. I was um Actually, I think we both made it to like the round of 12 for NCAA. So I'd say we were roughly around the same yeah, like pedigree wise, what we did. Both wrestled D1. And you trained with them. I trained with them. Alpha for, male, right? That's where my career started. And and you yeah. guys had to wrestle each other. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 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 sensing that he got the better of you in the training room. No, definitely not. Okay. But I mean, shit, you gotta remember when I went up there, I was day one of training. I never knew how to throw a punch. Right? Uh, but by, by the end of it, like I became UFC champion. There was some jealousy there. I was training under Dwayne Ludwig, kicked me out of the gym. So we had some we had some beef there, right? Oh, I, I can I can tell you I I, I feel you because um the guy that got me involved in the sport I don't talk about him much. Mm. Him and I was high school friends. His coach, his wrestling coach, and my wrestling coach was best friends. I'm trying to keep it fast, and we used to see each other in the finals in every tournament, and he we became friends. I went to college, I came back. He got me into MMA. Mm. I made it, and he didn't. Yeah. So it was, I can feel like it was some jealousy there. Yeah. So, I, okay, I can understand. We got to think about, we're both in the same weight class, right? Like, he trained me up. I ended up winning the belt. He's tried, like, four or five times, hasn't been able to do it. I was the first one at off mill to do it. And he wants to be able to, he wants to win to get the belt. Like, let's be honest, this is an individual sport. And the only way he's going to get it is if, if I'm training at his gym, we're not fighting each other for the belt. You know what I mean? So it was like a perfect segue to where... I get kicked out of the gym. We create a beef. You know, if I would have gone and win, won that fight against Dominic Cruz, I for sure would have fought him next, right? So it was a calculated calculated plan by That would have been a huge pay-per-view if it teammates huge, fought each other. 100%. I, I don't want to get too much into it. I do want to say something. First of all, we got to respect the way he did answer the question. He didn't talk crap, which he could have. Mm. And second of all, he is a champion. This guy wasn't a champion, but I do like your favor. I want to have him on the show here too. Yeah. Because I definitely want to hear his side of your story. Yeah. But the reason why I wanted TJ Dillashaw to be one of our Jackson athletes is because the respect he does have in the MMA community, but the respect he gives the people. And I've never seen the guy actually talk bad about someone. He always just talks about factual, like career statistics, technique. But he, I've never heard him be like, oh, don't work with that guy. That guy talks crap about me or this or that. Never. So I will say that. I got to clear that up. Second of all, did you see that Uriah Faber had to wrestle Nikki Ryan, that's Gordon Ryan's brother, in a grappling tournament? Mm -mm. That, that, that happened recently, didn't it? Hey, can we pull that up? Hey, Jimmy, can you pull that up? Do we have time? Yeah, yeah, real quick. I just got to see what Mr. Uh, Cal State Fullerton has to say about that. Because mm. he went to college at Cal State Fullerton. I used to wax his school in college wrestling. <laughs> he had no, like, thank the Lord he wasn't there when I was there. <laughs> I was, that you you took out the whole team? Oh, it was bad. So this is Uriah Faber versus Nikki Ryan at Polaris. And this was recently. Yeah, this was 2019. How that's come, that's how, Gordon Ryan's little brother. Oh, He was Gordon. 17 at the time. Oh, he's this a little is, guy. This is the one who has beef with Nikki Rod. Yeah. Looks like Nikki Ryan he was slapped him. him. Yeah, what's up with that? I don't know. That's very disrespectful. California kid. I don't think it was on purpose. Why are you doing a butt scoot? What's up with that? It's like the because girl. he doesn't want to do the wrestling. <laughs> 
right? Because if Uriah takes him down, he gets points. Mm. But if you butt scoot in, there's no points. That should be illegal. Yeah, I agree. How does the Uriah look right now, technique-wise, TJ? Uh, his defense has always been strong. That's like his thing on in wrestling. Like he's a guy that you shoot on him. And that's why his guillotines are so good too. Mm. Is because he's been such a good defensive wrestler. He'll stuff your shot, get get over the top of you. So he's a, this is kind of like his game is being defensive on the feet. Um, I'm sure that uh, the guy he's going against uh, is like you said, Gordon Ryan's brother, right? Yeah, yeah. Probably probably won. I'd imagine. Uh, Gordon Ryan's little brother, I think, won. Yeah. Yo, fast forward to the ending when he wins. I gotta pee again. Go ahead. I just gonna. <clears throat> so there's 50 seconds left in this match. Uriah was fighting um, Gordon Ryan's little brother. You can see Gordon Ryan having to deal with all these like push pull slaps. Like those are like un- that's like a unique tactic, huh? Like in a in a no gi match, that yeah. like slapping like. You think that would piss you off if you did that yeah. the whole time? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think you're when you're competing something like that, you yeah. just don't pay too much attention to it. Like you're so competitive on winning and getting position. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it's super fla- fragrant, uh, sorry, yeah, fragrant, you're going to be you know pissed off about it. But um, I don't think you pay attention to it too much. <laughs> but why? Why do you think that Uriah couldn't just kind of like, you know, leg pull over those legs and kind of like come to the side control like that. Like he keeps like kind of getting tossed with Gordon or because of the way he's got the inside butterfly hook as well. His, his knee across the chest, right? So that knee shield keeps anyone from getting too close. You have to keep it across someone's chest. You can keep your space. Then he's also got his other foot hooked on the inside, like a butterfly hook so we can elevate him. So anytime Uriah tries to use pressure, he elevates and kicks him over the top or uses mm. that half guard position. In terms of like wrestling, when you guys were when you just first started there, yeah, you obviously didn't know how to throw punches, right? Like no. you had you had never fought MMA fights, nothing, nothing. You just no. went straight from Cal State Fullerton to to Mill. Yeah, I, well, I went to I first started training with Mark Munoz because he was my assistant wrestling coach, and he's the one that introduced me to Uriah. And you're at Mark's like, man, you'd be a great fighter. You're a mean ass wrestler. I think you should give it a shot. I was enrolled in grad school. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm in, I'm in school. And so I, I actually was like, Uriah invited me up. I dropped out of school, moved up. And my first day there practicing ever was boxing sparring. And I had to spar against Joseph Benavides. And I just got my ass whooped, you know? <laughs> I never knew how to throw a punch. It's it pretty awesome. And then in, in terms of like moving on into, into MMA and obviously finding a role for yourself and, mm-hmm. and becoming a UFC champion, do you feel like Uriah Faber played a lot in that? Absolutely. Oh, yeah? Autumn did. I mean, Uriah Faber, the Chad Mendez, the Joseph Benavides, I mean, they kicked my fucking ass. So you got to remember, like, these guys are number two, three in the world, and I've never done anything. So that's what propelled me so fast. I mean, I went, I got in the UFC within one year of training. I won the UFC title in four years of training ever. I never knew how to throw a punch, right? So it was all because I went to a gym to where these guys kick my fucking ass, right? If I went to win somewhere and just kick everyone's ass, like, I would have never got better, you know? And then I, you know, obviously propelled my career because we brought in Dwayne Ludwig and just technically got a lot better. But learning how to fight, and, like, before Dwayne got there, it was just, like, big brother, little brother, like, sparring sessions. We just beat the shit out of each other. We didn't have a coach. It was just a bunch of college wrestlers beating each other up and getting ready for fights, right? Um, so I learned how to fight by being there for sure. And who knew Dwayne Ludwig was going to come uh – was going to come a such a good coach and trainer. I, I, I saw him when he was a kid too in the King in the Cage, mm-hmm. training on the Boss Rudin. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's just the way his mind works, dude. He's like OCD in a good way for technique. And I mean, fighting is his life. Even when he doesn't fight, he's constantly thinking about when we're in fight camp. He'd be like texting me at like midnight and shit, watching tape, like thinking about what we got to do the next day and just nonstop thinking about like caring about my career even more than I even cared about it, you did, know? Do you know, um, fun fact, he's the first one to actually do the Karate Kid crane kick yeah. in, oh, really? in MMA. Yeah. Oh, wow. He was the first one. We was talking to Leo Dumachita about that today. Yeah. Leo did, pulled it off like crazy, but uh, I forgot all about that. Uh, Dwayne yeah. Lovewood did it in King of the Cage. King of the Cage, yeah. The, years like ago. His logo for the Bang Muay Thai is him doing the, uh, yeah. the crane. Yeah. Well, well, do, that, do that again. I can't. I got one arm. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the crooked crane, dude. You know what I mean? Like, I got the one arm up like this. All right, you're getting your payback, right? <laughs> yeah, get okay. it all out. All right, we got it. We got it. 21. All right. all right, 21. My boy, Nate Diaz. I uh, love Nate Diaz. I love Nate. It's yeah. hard not to love Nate yeah. Diaz. He's just so real. You know what I mean? Him and his brother. They're like yeah. uh, two of my favorite fighters just because of that. You know, and I grew up an hour from the guy, so I've always been a fan of them, but they're just so real, you know, yeah. and they're always in your face. They're going to bring the fight. 
Again, I don't think they should be ahead of these other five UFC champions. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on. Come on. Come he, on. He's an iconic figure of the UFC. I agree with that. But if we're going off of who was the best fighters, he's not the best fighter. I think... I think Biggest upset in UFC history. Yeah. No. The Conor McGregor fight. That was not the biggest upset. Who? What's the biggest upset in UFC history? Uh, Holly Holm versus um, Ronda Rousey. No. 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 Yeah, Pete, it was one of the biggest. Pete, Pete Rousey versus Mark Coleman. Was the no biggest. one was watching the UFC at that point. <laughs> what do you mean? Respect to them, but that no one no, knew about that. No, no, no. I don't are we not? Are we not talking about thirty years of UFC right now? Yeah, there we go. Oh, all right, you're back. You're back. I gotta, I gotta know my place. I'm gonna get eaten alive. You're back. Hey, checkable offense on me. On me. Yeah. yeah. Go, ba go back. Go back. And Out of nowhere, dude. He just comes. All right. All right. I don't right. think it was the biggest upset. It definitely was not. I know it wasn't the biggest upset, but yes, it was a very big upset, and it was fucking awesome. I remember watching the fight, and it was like, Were you happy he, for him? We, yeah, he took the fight on ten days' notice and beat McGregor. Is on this huge hype. Like it was. So I mean, so Nate Diaz was getting paid shit before that. Like, he was on the Ultimate Fighter contract like I was. Never won. I, I got to rip mine up because I won a belt. And I just started getting paid different, right? But he never won a belt. So he was getting paid shit forever. He beats Conor McGregor. He's a superstar. Not surprised, motherfucker. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, just so sick, dude. Overnight. I know. Overnight. Yeah, I, I was so pumped yeah, yeah. for him. I love him. He came to Jackson right when I started doing Jackson. And... It was like 2020 or 2021, whatever. And he came in, he got like one of everything, posted a photo and everybody hit me up. The whole world hit me up. Like Nate Diaz just posted Jackson. He's wearing your chains and everything. And he had the silver Cuban, the silver rope. And I hit up Nate. I'm like, yo, thank you for all the respect. Thank you for everything. We went to Javier's. We ate food. A week later, I threw a party in Vegas. Massive party for Jackson. It was our big giant, like, you know, we're coming here to party. We're coming here to show everybody that we're a real brand now. I had like 200 people there. And uh, I get a call from the front desk, the Wynn Hotel. Yo, there's like 30 people here from like Stockton <laughs> or something. They're all like kind of drunk and uh, they're drinking beers in the lobby. Like, are they with you? They're saying they're with Jackson. I'm like, what? And then I and I look and I'm like, it was at the nightclub. And I look outside. I'm like, oh, it's Nate and all the boys. They're in board shorts, sandals. They just show up to the club. Excess like fully takes care of them. We walk in and Nate is like, I'm here to party. And he wasn't drinking. He was like sober. He's like, I'm here to party. I'm here to show love. And everybody was taking photos. I was like, this is insane. Like, this guy literally could do anything he wants in the world right now. And he, like, is going to show up here rolling deep with all these dudes. It's that crazy that they had to call you. I mean, how do they not know it was Nate Diaz? No, they did at the front of the nightclub. Yeah. They just said, yo, they said they're here with you, but Nate hadn't shown up yet. Oh, and they were just okay. being rowdy. Because yeah. they're so, like, dude, his crew, when they move around, <laughs> yeah. 30 deep, black hoodies. Yeah. They don't care who you are. They're them. They're the most raw, authentic crew, yeah. like, if there was a crew that you could like grow up fighting, that's the crew you want to be with. Let me tell you something that Nate Diaz for me, Nate Diaz did for me that no other fighter has ever done for me. He gave me front row tickets to his fight with um, the YouTuber. What's that dude? Oh, name? no way. Uh, Jake Paul? Jake Paul. Really? No way. He gave way. me front row. I invited you. Oh, yeah, I couldn't go. Yeah, you said, no, fuck Nate Diaz. No, I ain't doing that. Oh, <laughs> come joking. on. That's crazy. I'm joking. He didn't say that. Let's yeah. start no, that. No, no, no. That's crazy. No, no, no. He was real. Jesus. No, real talk. He was real busy. No, you told busy. me I couldn't go because you were bringing a girl. No. What do you mean? You offered me the ticket, and then at the last minute, he said, nah, I only have one. And then- No, that's not true. That's not true. Like, yeah, that wasn't true. And you moved the girl. That's, that wasn't true. That's when we first started the podcast, me and him hanging so out. So who home. were you sitting with? Coach, uh, Coach, Bobby Coach. No. Oh, that's right. I did take a girl. That's right. That's right. I forgot. That's before Coach was here. I took. A, I did Bro, take a girl. What? You know what? I invited the girl after he said he couldn't make it. He said he couldn't make it. But I'm gonna tell you something. No, no fighter that I that I could that I could remember like on that on that level. You know, gave me like front row tickets. Yeah, so those, him, are, those are expensive Diaz. tickets. Yeah, expensive. That's, that's, that's him though. That's Nate Diaz as a person. Yeah. For the people that don't know him personally, and we obviously all have the honor of knowing him and the privilege. One of the most humble. Most respectful dudes to his boys. But yeah. I'm gonna tell you, that before that years ago, you know, me and Mayhem Miller was really cool, and that crew, they crew, they jumped Mayhem Miller. So back in the day, it was him and a bunch of them, Jake Shields, all of them. They jumped. So I was, I stayed out of the beef, but I was kind of looking at him like kind of sideways, like, man, y'all jumped my boy. Like, should I stay out of it or should I? <laughs> but you know, like, I don't want no problems with the <laughs> but, yeah. but you know, I, you know what? It was none of my business. I know Mayhem can be kind of crazy. I'm like, Mayhem probably did oh, something. He's for to sure crazy. He probably did something yeah. to deserve it. So, yeah. but do we agree? Number twenty one, eight years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's. The, I don't think he should be ahead of these five champions, but I do think that I he should be on the list. I, I disagree with that. Yeah, I, I think I think twenty one's a good number for Nate. Cool. I'm, I'm kind of biased though. I, I mean, I'm not talking about numbers. I'm just talking about who he's in front of. Like, oh, you really think? 
think he should be in front of Kamaru Usman or Frankie Edgar, Adesanya, or Max Holloway. Those are I all think UFC Nick Diaz, champions. I think Nate Diaz will piece all of them names up you just did. You mm-hmm. just did. I mm-hmm. think he'll piece it. He, he, he can submit them all. I think he has the best jujitsu out of all best, of them. He, he, he's, he, even though he's never won a belt, he is one of the best fighters. I think he could beat maybe Frankie Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, yeah. he's got the best jujitsu out of all of them. He could sit there and bang with Max Holloway. That would be a great fight, but he yeah. would sit there and bang with him all day. Yeah. Are they the same weight class? No. 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 So Diaz is big, dude, now. He used to be a lot smaller, but he's, yeah. you know, came into his body. Would you big. like to see the UFC go back to where it was in the beginning, where it was- No um, weight classes? No weight class. No, fuck no. I'm little, dude. Dude, I, <laughs> I, will, I will fuck you up for talking yeah. shit about my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I signed that fight today. <laughs> if Dana White came in here right now, <laughs> you and TJ Dillashaw- I was like, fuck yeah, he's been trolling me all day. <laughs> you I'll fight your boy. I would fight my potato. Today? How would you Today. fight him? <laughs> you know what I would do? I would just wear your ass out. Yeah, he'll like, run yeah. around you. Fucking yeah, he'll, 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 he'll wrestle me and stuff. But I'll probably take I'll probably get taken down, but then I I'll elbow him like <laughs> Boss Rudin did. Um R.I.P. Kevin Randman back in the day. Mm. It's UFC 20. Mm-hmm. That was my first time ever going to a UFC fight. Mm. UFC 20, I elbow your ass just like Boss Rudin did. <laughs> How would you fight him? He's not me. I'll wear his ass out. I'll get him breathing like, I need some chicken nuggets. <laughs> Why you gotta say chicken? Why did he have to say chicken? Chicken nuggets, too. He, he, would, no, he no, said no, chicken I nuggets. I don't care about the nuggets, but Why did it have to be uh, chicken? He said chicken nuggets. He's all breathing heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a pterodactyl rex, huh? Oh, come on, God. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, you came yeah. for him. Man. You came for him. Right? You started it. Right, you started it. I ain't way. never came for no man. I don't know what the fuck you talking about, bro. <laughs> hey, yo, you need to watch hey, what you the stuff you say. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. <laughs> never. Did he come for you? What? He came for me? Yeah, you never. Came for bro. Why y'all? This, this, yes, this, you did. Th- 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 y'all Wait, knew what am I missing? You don't understand. Like, he don't you understand. came for me. You c- Oh. Watch you coming. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> you gotta watch what you say in 2023. <laughs> hey, in 2023, you gotta be careful what you say. But I, but you did attack him first. There Thank you. Go. Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. And then he sprawled on you. Yeah. Reverse. Oh yeah. damn! Leg. Heck yeah. yeah. You know. All right. But you didn't come. Don't worry. What's number twenty? Uh, Dominic Cruz. Oh wow. I think he should be higher on the list than twenty. Um, I obviously have some beef with the guy, right? I think I lost a fight to him that I should not have lost. It was a split decision that I thought I won four rounds, but I'm biased. Why? See, right? Why? What do you mean? Why, why do you think it was a like? Why do you think you run? I, th- I think that one of the well, I think one of the judges, Tony Weeks, is a fucking idiot, <laughs> and he scored the fight completely opposite. I really think he thought I was Dominic Cruz and he was TJ Dillashaw. Like mm. he gave, uh, like he switched the rounds up. Like the rounds he gave Dominic Cruz, like he gave him four and five, and those were easily my rounds, right? And like so, he like almost like switched the rounds up that we think we should that I thought I should have won. To, um, to your defense, I'm going to say this. In my opinion, I think the UFC has the worst um, judges. Mm. When I was doing Ultimate Fighter, I remember watching this one judge. I don't, You know I'm bad with names. I don't remember her name. But she had like a little kid with her while she was judging these guys' lives. She I was had gonna, a kid with her? She had a kid what? with her. What? And her kid was doing something. And she wasn't even watching the fight. I'm watching the whole thing. And she was tending to the kid. The kid was like rowdy, like being like a little naughty kid. Yeah. And then being she, a kid, yeah. yeah, being a kid, damn. And, and this, you know the Ultimate Fighter, you know those guys. You 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 was there, right? Yeah, I've been on it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's like those guys put that they put their lives on hold. It's like everything to them. Yeah. And she's watching the kid, and that and that left a bad taste in my not, my mouth about. They made they made me look at. <laughs> you coming for me, dude? Yeah. Hey, what? What? <laughs> what? What's in your mouth? <laughs> What's in your mouth? <laughs> Wait, you uh, can't ever get, you can't but get no, I feel story. you on that though, dude. Because like it's like for instance, me losing that fight against Cruz took millions of dollars out of my pocket, right? Like I would have had my win streak would have been insanely long. I would have had the longest win streak in UC history. I would have had mm-hmm. like the longest mm-hmm. title fight defense. Like because after that, I just kept winning, kept winning. It's like I would not lose that fight. The so different, so much more money. Like different. Like I would have fought Uriah after that. It would have been a huge pay per view. I would have got paid like a motherfucker. <laughs> Like crazy, you know. That means a lot to us because at the end of the day, we're 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 putting our bodies on the line. Yeah. Well, that, what he's we, saying we, is true too. Like, to. look at the outcome of that. That yeah. one yeah. fight could potentially have altered millions his of dollars. And, and t- hey, tell tell them how bad a loss hunts you. Like sometimes, do you be like taking a shower years later? You think about, oh, if I would have did this, I would have won that fight. Man, I hate losing more than I like winning. You know, mm-hmm. it fucking it bugs me so much. Yeah. But that's why I'm like so aggressive in practice and I hate losing practices. I hate losing anything, right? But yeah, it haunts the shit out of you. It haunts you. It haunts yeah. you. 
So, but Dominique, you wouldn't put him up at 20. I'd put him higher. Oh, you, you oh, okay. oh wow. put him higher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I Even think, though you don't like the guy. It's not that I don't like him. It's that I just, you know, I, I like, it just digs me deep that like, I'm talking about losing millions of dollars, yeah. right? Like a fight that I think I won. Yeah. He talked to, and that was the first fight I went into where I had to deal with someone heckling me. Before that, I never dealt with it. What right? do you say that you're you do the most? Just nonstop shit and stuff. That, and I would try to like get back at him. And it was like, I don't know. You're just like one of those people that just talk louder than you, you know? It's like couldn't fucking get a word off. And he was just like one of the guys that really tried to push my buttons. And it worked, man. Because the first fucking couple rounds, all I wanted to do was knock him out. And then finally, till like third round, I started like slowing down and like picking him apart. Like I, I would have finished him if we had had more rounds. I like I like Dominic's Cruz because I can tell he got a strong mind. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. for somebody to come back from an injury like that, that many you, injuries, he had like yeah. three, Bro, yeah. multiple injuries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. also too, uh, I mean, we do have to give him more credit than most about how long his longevity is. Right? Yeah, so yeah. that's that plays a big part. In well, he never fights. His longevity is long because he doesn't fight very often, right? Because he was hurt. Yeah. I mean, his fights are, he fights like, what, one in four years, right? So it's like, yeah, you can be long, right? I mean. All right, makes sense. Yeah. I like I like TJ's input on everything because it's very factual. <laughs> you, you keep your emotions out of it, which is nice. Yeah. It's refreshing. Mm-hmm. Rampage, very emotional when we talk about things. <laughs> Number 19, Rampage. Um, Charles. Aververa. Charles what? Aververa. How you, how you, Oliveira? Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, that's what you said. That's uh, what I said. Charles hard. Oliveira. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. <laughs> yeah. Sounds perfect. Dude, I love Charles Oliveira's story. Uh-huh. Right? Like him living in the favelas in a closet pretty much with no roof. Like just as poor as you possibly could be. Like you couldn't be more poor than what this guy was. And the way he made it, um, the, I think he's only got, in his last 20 fights, I think he might have it here. No. See, in his last 20 fights, he's only got one decision. They've all been finishes. Yeah, some of them and him losing, but still, it's like that's how he goes out, right? He's going to go out for a win no matter what, and someone's going to get finished. And he's very exciting. Um, his career just blossomed when he moved up a weight class. I'm a big fan of Charles Oliveira. I love that. What, what weight class was he? He we used to fight 45s, and he would just cut too much weight, and he moved up to 55s. And even 55s, it seems like it's a pretty good cut for him. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. Yeah. He definitely... I think the finishing, like the most finishes Mm -hmm. and the way he finishes fights, I definitely think he's one of the most brutal fighters like in that division or was in that division to to, to a certain point. I just think that's something about the way he, I I don't want to say attacks the game plan or or like creates a game plan. You would probably be able to speak on this better, but the way he formulates his strategy against fighters, I feel is very methodical. Like he kind of looks at the striking or kind of looks like, unless he's that lucky, I, yeah. I think it might seem that way. I think uh, I don't think he's very like a cerebral fighter. I just think he's so good in so many different positions. His jujitsu is sick. Got it. Right, slick. Like he gets into positions, boom, he catches it. And now his striking's gotten so good that he's dangerous everywhere. Right. Got so it. that's why those finishes come because his. I mean, goes to the ground. You take him down, he might fucking choke you out. Might submit you. Right. If you're on the feet, he's gonna bang with you. Right. He finishes you. So I think it's just he's so well rounded. Got it. Yeah. You know, my personal opinion. Yeah. No, and and that that's not. Honestly, I wanted to ask you about that. Like, yeah. do you feel like he's just that good or he always gets that lucky? That was the point I was kind of making. Not I lucky. like what you said. I yeah. mean, I wouldn't say he's definitely not lucky because he's good everywhere. Yeah. Right? I don't, I wouldn't say that he comes in with like the best game plans, right? He's not like a cerebral fighter where him and his coaches don't, at least it doesn't seem that way to me, Got right? It. Like, I'm not no, in makes every day of their training, but if I were to, I've been in a couple cards with him, I watch him train the week of the fight. I wouldn't say that they're going through, like me and Dwayne are going through exact combos I'm going to hit in my fucking fight. Like I know what combo I'm going to hit. I know I'm going to cut him off. I know I'm going to break his legs down. Like this is what I'm going to do. Like I don't see that in his yeah. week, in his preparation the week of the fight. Yeah. You know? No, it just there's something about him. I just feel like every time he fights or whenever he would win these fights and get these finishes in UFC, it seemed like it's that. Like he just, oh, caught him, done. Exactly. But yeah. it's like either that, like what, what TJ said is a lot better of a way of an explanation, which yeah. is I'm glad we have a champion here who knows UFC and MMA history. But it just, that's what, it, it always comes off that way. Like, damn, did he really strategize that he was going to catch him in that? Mm-hmm. Or he just is that good? He just saw it and took yeah, advantage of it. Yeah, I think that's what it is, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Number 18. You got this one, dude. No, no. I no, this is this you, one. Rampage. It's all you, dog. Alexander Volin Musky. <laughs> Vol, no vol, 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 Volonasco, Volonaski, Volonaski, Volonaski. Oh, You're missing the K. Yeah, Volonaski. Oh, damn, I don't got my reading glasses on. Okay, brother, getting old. <laughs> Hell yeah, man, Alexander Volonaski, man, like he's a guy that is insanely well-rounded and so strong for the weight class. I remember him and Chad Mendes fought before anyone knew who Alex was. 
and Chad had him beat. Like typical Chad Mendez is just beating people up, gets gassed out and tired, and Volkanovski finishes him. But after I watched that fight, because Chad like dropped him with an overhand right, like I was like, damn, this guy's tough. You know what I mean? And not only that, then he just now since you watch what his career's done since then, he's he's a cerebral fighter. He's the guy that has a game plan together. He's going to come out and pick you apart. The way that he beat Max Holloway in a couple of, again, I think Max won one of those fights, but the way that he beat him. He beat Max Holloway? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How, how, how Three he, wins over him. How did, how did he beat Max Holloway? Uh, well, the first fight was he just kicked his calf like a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Calf kicked him. Guy, mm-hmm. Slowed him down. Calf kicked him. Picked him apart that way. I think Max Holloway won the second fight. And then there was a third fight that I think uh, Volkanovski won. It was close, though. But yeah, I mean, he's definitely on this list. Um, you know, he's number one pound for pound in the world right now, so he could be higher, right? Is, like, is he the champ right now? Yes, mm-hmm. he's at, fighting fifty five, one forty one, five, forty five. Dude, what? he used to weigh like two hundred pounds. He was a rugby player, and he's short. He's like my height. He's just stacked. What? How do you get to, from two, two? I mean, I'm one eighty right now. You one eighty right 180? now? One mm-hmm. eighty. I can't even see it in your face though. He's my legs. shredded. He has a twelve pack. You see? Are, are you are you ripped? Well, I'm staying ripped, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you on that clean juice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm definitely trying to for healing and some certain things, some certain peptides and stuff. I'm trying yeah. to help with my healing. Um, taking some BPC-157 that's supposed to help with, they call it the Wolverine pep- peptide to get rid of my inflammation. Is taking, it helping? It's helping. I mean, it's hard to tell because I've never had a surgery this massive and you see, I can't, yeah, one can't told my us. One told us about your surgery. I didn't know they put a. Uh, they took your whole arm off and put somebody else's arm on you, they like put, Jacks from uh, from. They took so say you were someone that's thirty years old that's uh, passed away that was an organ donor. You know, I took their. I'm unfortunate for that person, whoever it was, but I R. took R. their hip bone. They cut an orange slice out of their hip bone. They cut an orange slice out of my shoulder because I had a big dent in it from my time to dislocated it. They put that orange slice in there like a puzzle piece. And then the gnarly thing is they took the trap, my lower trap in my back. You have three parts of your trap. My lower part, they took it out of my back and they put it in my shoulder as a graft because my rotator cuffs turned into like wet toilet paper tissue. They were horrible. You couldn't stitch them back together. So they replaced my rotator cuff with my lower trap. And then they attached it all together with a cadaver Achilles tendon. So what they put in place of your lower trap? Nothing. So what that's going to do? I mean, it's going to, you don't use it. It's not as dynamic as your shoulder is. So... Mm. You're not going to miss it as much. Yeah, it's going to fucking suck, right? Yeah. Like, I'm probably going to not have the strongest straight arm pull downs. My pull ups might suck a little bit more, right? But mm. hopefully my shoulder works, right? Because yeah. right now I fucking can't do shit. So, so what did you look up the uh, surgeries, like the percentages of those surgeries coming? Yeah. So, I've found the world's best shoulder doctor, Dr. Itamura. He's uh, out of um, Japan, Cedar Side Night up here. Oh, sorry. My racist. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's Asian. Yeah. No, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, my kids yeah. are Japanese, so I can. Yeah, yeah. Get away um, I, I searched him out, but he's he's only done. I think I'm like his 50 second surgery of this oh. type or something like that, oh, right? That's, that's still good. All of them have been successful except for one because some dude fell and like fucked it up. Oh, okay, mm. so he's and very good. So before so. we go on from Volk, though, we got to talk about fights Makachev twice in a year, right? February mm. and October. You know, the first one was crazy fight, right? Went to the decision. The mm-hmm. second one. It was that KO, that kick, quick. Mm-hmm. It was uh, like three minutes into the fight. What What do we think about that? Did that hurt his career? Did he need to take those fights? Is it Does it damage well, anything? Well, the first one did awesome for his career because a lot of people think he won, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, the second one, I don't think he should have taken it on show. I mean, awesome for him for doing it. And it's it's kind of a win-win. He probably got paid very well. Um, and if you lose, like... You took it on short notice. It's a champion above you. You're still a champion at 145, so whatever. But it did mess up his chance for ever really getting a real shot at him again, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, Volk, he fought Makachev. Mm-hmm. Makachev, chill, twice in a year. <laughs> fought him in February and fought him in October, yeah. right? The first one was an amazing fight. Went crazy for his career. The second one, KO, three minutes in. It was like, obviously, we didn't get to see much out of him, right? Yeah. In both fights, he had to move up a weight class, though. Bad for his career? Should he have done it? Should, was it needed? Like, what do you think? I mean, definitely not bad for his career. The first one, a lot of people think he won, right? Mm-hmm. They, everyone thinks that he beat Islam, and there's a lot of talk about it, and that's why the rematch actually happened. So that was great for his career. Um, the second one, he took it on short notice, so I wouldn't say it was bad for his career. The only problem is that he's not going to get a shot, a real shot to try to beat Islam now, you know? Yeah. He, that was his second chance, and he he probably got paid very well, though. Right, and he lost to a champion. He still is a champion, so it's not the end of the world. But 
it could have been a whole nother legacy story for him if he would have took a real chance and got got the chance to beat him. I still think no matter what, Islam would have won that second fight. He would have made some adjustments. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I do. I do think that it was next level though for mm -hmm. him to do that. It was great for MMA. Seventeen, Amanda Nunez. I know. Her, I know her. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of that girl. Yeah. She came. She came in in the sport and just made me look at women's fighting a, a, a lot different. You know, because uh, you know. In, <sighs> She man, she was just knocking folks out and just she's just a, just an animal. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I yeah. agree. I yeah. agree. I mean, she's definitely on this list. She's the greatest. She's the greatest woman's fighter of all time. So she should probably be maybe even a little bit higher. Uh, but it's hard because there's a lot of legends that we're going to continue to go on to. But yeah, she belongs on this list. That's for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, love her. She yeah. she the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Number sixteen, right? Oh, Horse Gracie. There we go. That, there you go. You can't mess that name you up. Can't miss that, you can't miss up oh, Horse Gracie. Yeah. But, you know, m most people call him Royce by, le by reading his name. But I know Horse Gracie. Every, yeah. in the, anybody that knows anything about UFC, anything about MMA, that's always like the first name. Yeah. You know, that guy. Well, that's why you see all the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Like, mm -hmm. you can't, I mean, that guy's going to be on this list. I mean, Gracie Baja, Gracie, um, all the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. There's like, you know, like and the whole Gracie family now has exploded because of what he did in the UFC. I, I, I would argue that he he is UFC. He is MMA. He he is like the reason behind it. Like the smaller guy beat all those people back in the day. He mm -hmm. had some really tough fights. And they 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 made jujitsu what it is in this country today just based off him and, and, and what he did in the sport. Mm -hmm. You would say he is UFC, but then at the same time, right, there's like these stages. I think for me, for like what I think, I mean, I used to watch those fights. I used to go to Blockbuster, rent them on the shelf and get them, rent them, and me and my brothers would watch them as a kid, crazy stuff, right? But the time that uh, Forrest Griffin and Stephen Bonner fought is what made the UFC, right? Like that, that whole season, it like made it, right? Like yeah, obviously yeah. the pioneers like yourself fighting yeah, in pride yeah. made it as yeah, well. Yeah, There's stages. Can't, yeah, I can't, I can't argue with what you yeah. just said. Yeah. That's what saved the saved UFC. Saved it. You know, so yeah. that's what I'm going to say for you. Yeah. That's, that's what saved the UFC for me mm -hmm. when I was uh, coming up and watching. I think I was still in pride at the time, mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm not mistaken. That's what saved the UFC because UFC is about to, they're about to you know, yeah, they fall were, over. Yeah, there were $40 million in the hole. Yeah, yeah. but, yeah. but, sure. but for me, um, I think Gracie is what got all the the first fans interested in the UFC. Yep. I mean, one thing, one of my favorite fights with Gracie is when he uh, like basically submitted Shamrock and Shamrock like tapped and then pretending he did it or whatever. Yeah. And then he gets <laughs> that up. That was he's some like, true WWE shit there. <laughs> yeah, he like taps and then pretends he didn't. And Gracie stands up and he's like, yo, what are you doing, bro? You tap, bro. Don't ever do that. Like, yeah. you know, be respectful. And yeah. then they raise his hand and he's in a gi and you know, shamrocks and it, and it was jacked. Yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy. And what people don't know, there's two shamrocks, like a lot of Frank casual, yeah, the, there's Frank and Ken, Ken and a lot of, a lot of casual MMA fans always confuse them. You know, both had great successful careers. Yeah. All right. What do we got next? Number 15, Tito Ortiz. Mm -hmm. Tito Ortiz was the first poster boy for, for, for UFC. He, he was, he took it like mainstream in this area in, in, in Huntington beach and in, in California. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he was like the first heel, the first. Yeah, I was gonna say, would you think he's like the first character in the UFC? I like would say, hundred percent. Yeah. I would yeah. say he was the first character. But you know, a lot of people would say that Tank Abbott was okay, but that was yeah. Yeah, yeah. but 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 for somehow Tito surpassed his name surpassed Tank Abbott's, and I don't know, I don't know. I how. mean, he was the first one to put branding Ooh. behind a fighter, right? He yeah. had the flames, he had the beanie, he had the flag. He was in Huntington Beach at Sancho's Tacos, going crazy, yeah. running around the city, doing the grave digger. I think he talked more like Tank Abbott didn't. Wasn't the guy that talked shit, right? Yeah. But Tito was. So Tito was Tank Abbott did talk a little shit, but Tito took it to the next level. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He was more of a character mm -hmm. outside of the UFC. That's what people forget. Like mm -hmm. he brought attention to the UFC. He pioneered the sports like popularity by being so active in the community. He's mm -hmm. very, he was very active. Now a little backstory: Tank Abbott is the one who brought Tito Ortiz over. Oh and, really? Yeah, and 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 I trained with those guys. I was in the circle. My coach, my wrestling coach, Paul Herrera, is in all that, and he told me a little bit of it. Um, Tank Abbott was called a Hunter Beach, Huntington Beach bad boy first. Oh, wow! So they yeah. bump heads. They don't they don't like each other and stuff gotcha. right now because Tito is a Hunter wow. Beach bad boy now. Yeah, they yeah. I did not know I that. No idea, that's, yeah. that's why I love you. You always be coming up with crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's just, he's but like he, an onion. He's just got different layers of he information. Like an onion. <laughs> what? Out of nowhere, he calling you, calling you Shrek and stuff from the movie. You know the onion. Hey, hey, hey. The, the, I know this ain't on you. I see, I see. He put words. I didn't in. do nothing. You just put words. He's in trying to start. Nah, he's nah, trying I'm to right start here. this. No, this don't. Fight. Hey, don't say that. 
You put the words in. I'm no, sitting right here. I'm I'm sitting right here. And what did he, he say? He said, "I'm like an onion." You said, yeah. "I smell like an onion." You do not smell like anything. I would <laughs> never say that. I smell like Versace today. Now nah, you smell crazy good. Versace, Versace, Versace. Versace, Versace. All right, we're gonna move on. Number fourteen, Ronda Rousey. I'm gonna keep it one hundred with with Ronda, about Ronda Rousey. I never liked it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like her persona. I didn't like how she said she could beat dudes. Mm-hmm. That I don't, was weird. I don't like her husband. He trained one of my dogs and kept him, kept her for six months, and she came back dumber. Bro, what? <laughs> Y'all laughing? I'm Is telling this you, a true story. True story. I mean, what how, did he do? He, I, I had a, I had a, a cane corso that I brought from one of my friends, Frank Sienna, mm-hmm. uh, in, in, in Frank Sierra in, in, in Vegas. Hans Monacamp told me. Saw my dog. She's like a big massive. I got her to, to be a girlfriend to my my favorite dog I ever had, Adronicus, to make puppies and all this stuff so he can have a girlfriend. But she was dumb as fuck. She was stupid. She was <laughs> costing me money, chewing up my, you know, like my air conditioning outside the unit. Yeah. The yard. She cost me so much money. So Hans like, man, you need to get that dog trained. I was like, you know a good trainer? Yeah. Tra- what's, it, what's her husband name? Tra- uh, the big tall dude that um, oh that, 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 Travis um, right yeah uh, Travis something what's that what, that um what's it called drop kicked in the face yeah oh, whatever his it. name is yeah what's his name Brown Travis, Travis Brown. Brown yep and what uh, and, and so Travis Brown had my dog he said yeah this fighter he's fighting in the UFC he's a good dog trainer he had her for like six months normally people train your dog for six weeks yeah he charged I paid for it he charged me it was a lot of money too I can't remember but over 1500 bucks I can't yeah. remember yeah. and she came back dumb dumber <laughs> wasn't even trained <laughs> And so, and then when I found out Ronda she Rousey. She needs to be off the list, bro. Yeah, she, she needs to be off the list. And when I, I, found, Ronda Rousey's when I When I found out Ronda Rousey married, I'm like, oh, go figure. I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't like her. Yeah. I, I, I didn't like her persona. Uh, I, I, I didn't like, I thought that she was a hype train. And I was in Mexico doing a movie when she fought uh, Holly Holm. Mm-hmm. If I was, if I would have been at home and been paying attention, that would have been the first fight. I never bet on any fight yet. That would have been the first fight I ever bet on. I would have won a ton of money. I would have never bet on Holly Holm. I thought that Holly Holm was going to get destroyed by Ronda Rousey. I thought her arm was going to get ripped off instantly. And when I saw the highlight, I was like, holy shit. I couldn't. Like, that was, to me, the biggest upset in the UFC yeah. history. I think it was. One yeah. of them. Um, yeah, crazy. Ronda, Ronda Rousey's judo was insane. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't like when she went to WWE, though. I liked her in the UFC. WWE, I never really got behind the character, the, mm. the, the fighting style and stuff. I was like, I'm a huge WWE, WWF fan. I never really got bought into that. It was so weird. So, so Ronda Rousey, but 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 honestly, the fans did her wrong. I'm gonna say this: me saying that I don't I don't know Ronda Rousey person. I never met her. Yeah. So I, maybe as a person, I might like her. You know what I'm saying? Don't yeah. get me wrong. I might like her personality, but as as a fan, I watch when I try to watch a fight. I try to watch as a fan. As a fan, I couldn't get behind Ronda Rousey. But when her her leaving the sport because the because the fans reacted to the way she lost and stuff like that her just leaving the sport like that that's that was i felt like that's kind of weak-minded you know what i'm saying like we we all lose we we all like you know what I'm saying only one that never lost was john jones so far who else you know what i'm saying and I mean, and, and, and and kebab I mean, yeah kebab yeah kebab. And, and 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 you get ridiculed from the from the fans yeah you know what i'm saying and you gotta you gotta take that turn you know turn your social media off for, for a couple of months it'll go down she went over to wwe but i think i think person that was a good move for her mm. number 13 you got this dude this is oh my god you got it S- stipe Miotics. Close. Miochik. Miochik. Very, Miochik. Good. Very yeah, close. Yeah, close. Too. Very close. The better I, than I, I thought you'd do. I actually like <laughs> I actually I actually like um Stipe. I think he's yeah, a, he's, uh, awesome. he's awesome. He's he's a, he's yeah. a good guy. He's a firefighter still, like Cleveland. fights. Like yeah. He still firefights? Yeah. yeah. Man, I'm kind of low key Jellica. I wanted to be a firefighter. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. I want to be a pro wrestler or a firefighter. Damn. You still do it? No, I'm too old now. Are you? Yeah, yeah. But he he's a good champion. I think he I think he um considered I, the best heavyweight champion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think he's I think he's deserved to be on this list. I hope he goes in the Hall of Fame. Um is he is he retired yet? No. no. He was supposed to fight John Jones, but John Jones got hurt. That's right. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be the biggest fight ever. Mm-hmm. That's right. How do you guys think he'll do against John Jones though? I think Jones will win. Yeah. Uh, how? Like um like submission? No, by decision. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. I thought you were gonna say by a head kick or by, by no, a I just out. Jones is like one of those guys. He's he's technically good, but his body, like the way his body's made up, how long his reach is, and how like long his legs and arms are compared to how long his torso is, it's like so hard to deal with. I feel like mm. not only is he a great like intelligent intelligent fighter, but also his body 
attributes make him even better. You know, I don't know. I mean, Stipe been out for a long time. I think John's a little bit faster. Who knows? I could be way off, but I would bet on uh, John Jones. All right. All right. Number 12, my boy Kane. I love Kane Velasquez. Kane Velasquez. Kane Velasquez. The scariest, I said it right. yeah, the scariest, nicest guy ever. Like, just I remember, so I'm like this little ass white boy wrestling in college, Cal State Fullerton. He's wrestling at ASU, big heavyweight. Used to walk around with just like shorts on and have his singlet top off or off, like on or off. And he just has brown pride tattooed across his chest. I used to be so scared of him when I'd walk around the college wrestling tournaments. Just are you scared of him or were you scared of brown having pride? Just his, like, because he, he was, like, even though he's the nicest human being, because he's, like, shy and doesn't talk and just gives, like, the death stare, mm. he's scary, right? How would, you, how would you have felt if he, if he would just had pride on his chest? No. I would have still been scared. <laughs> just the way he walked around, bro. <laughs> the, se- the second time, I'd have been more scared. Yeah. <laughs> be more but scared. I think he, I think he, um... I think the only thing that that messed him up was his injuries. I think that yeah. he was mm-hmm. he was uh, a good champion. Mm-hmm. He was a good, great, great, great wrestler, and the way he great put wrestler. his striking in with it, I, I, yeah. He's, yeah. A, he's a fucking man. I, yeah. One thing I will say about Kane is I feel like Kane's uh, style of training, like being with Luke and DC and all those guys, and kind of being like the bad boy in that gym, but being like the one that's not so loud and mm-hmm. talking. I think that added to the persona or the mm-hmm. aura about him being so scary. Mm-hmm. Cause if you meet him, he's like the nicest guy in the nicest world. Guy in the world. So, so like, it's kind of a unique situation yeah. cause he has this crazy reputation, but he, bro, like even when he was here, I, w- I took him to dinner and everybody's staring at him and he just turns around and he's like, hello. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, they're kind of more shocked from that. Cause they feel like something's off, you know, yeah. he's the nicest, nicest guy. Yeah. And he also has so much respect for fighters. Right. Yeah. Cause he still goes trains and house people. So, one thing I will say about Kane is uh, his personality and his attitude towards fighters and fighting as a whole. He's top notch, top tier. He he would be in the Hall of Fame, huh? Oh, for sure. Yeah, has to be. I feel like. Do you feel like that? Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Cool. All I'm right. gonna let him mess up some names. I gotta use the restroom real quick. Yeah. All right. Number eleven, Matt Hughes. What do you think about that? I don't like him. You don't like Matt Hughes? I never liked him. Why? His style. No, I, I I like I liked I liked his 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 style. Uh, I liked his style of, of fighting. I think he was a he was a good fighter. Yeah. And um, you know, um, uh, in my era, I was fighting over in Pride, and he was um uh, fighting in the UFC, and he was a, he was a great um reigning reigning champion and stuff like that. I just didn't like him because I can tell like he wouldn't like me. You didn't like a guy because you could tell that potentially the guy wouldn't like you. From from me being from the south and knowing what I know about people, really, yeah. So I just so he's, I he's I, a I two time know. UFC welterweight champion. He's crazy ground and pound, ground and pound, and he was crazy at kind of being a key figure in the stylizing and the fighting techniques of UFC in the beginning. I feel like I also feel like as a champion, he did a lot, right? Because yeah. he definitely fought some good people. Yeah. So I shouldn't I shouldn't bring my my personal stuff to it, but um, when I try to watch the fights, I try to watch as a fan. Got it. That nigga didn't wash his hands. <laughs> oh, that, 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 oh my God, dude. Leave all of that in. Uh, so you just went to the bathroom, you didn't wash your hands, and then you rubbed his face. Weird. That is oh crazy. God, that's weird. Weird. I can tell how fast he went to the bathroom because I've been going to the bathroom this whole so time. So that's in your face. You be you be kicking around shit. So <laughs> so how you how you feel about Matt Hughes? He was a huge star and and I loved him. I told Bear how much I loved him mm. and how much of a big fan of Matt Hughes I am. He's 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 great. I I love Matt Hughes. <laughs> Let's go to number ten, <laughs> TJ. <laughs> number ten, Daniel Cormier. Um, Daniel Cormier, man. Not only is he just a great champion, uh, I mean, obviously amazing wrestler. He's a great character for the UFC now, as doing all his commentating. You know, he's he's done such a great job with everything. Um, I remember when I fought Hinn and Barrow to win the belt my first time. Uh, I was on the same. He was on the same card as me, and he fought um, Dan Henderson. I remember him just ragdolling Dan Henderson, just throwing. Yeah, he way Dan Henderson. Of course, I know he did, but it Why was just like crazy to me. Why do we all talk about that? We just had Dan Henderson in here two days ago. I, and, dude, and during the fight, DC goes, "What well, the day before we have Dan Henderson in here, DC on a fight, he goes, yep, 
this guy seems he seems to be like two, three steps ahead of the fighter right now. And kind of like how I was against Dan Henderson <laughs> while he's commentating. Damn. And, and when Dan walks in, I go, Dan, did you hear what DC had to say about you? He said, no, I heard he said something about me. And we pulled the thing and he goes, not sure why he would say that. I didn't think he was two, three steps ahead of me. He weighed about 50 pounds more than me, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't you can't brag about beating up a guy that you outweighed that much. Yeah, yeah. Know, yeah. But, but, you know. Dan Henderson, though, he's, of course, going to say, like, ah, I, don't, I don't know. I'm going to tell you, I became a fan of um, Daniel Cormier after he made that video of him dancing around eating a bucket of chicken. <laughs> oh, my God. That's when I became a fan of him. <laughs> that was pretty uh, funny, actually. That was funny as fuck. Yeah. I was like, oh, he can make fun of himself. Yeah. One thing I do want to ask TJ, TJ, on, on DC, you know, his last two fights, 2019, 2020, both in August, uh, he loses to Stipe, mm. right? Before that, I think he had one draw against John Jones, right? But we all know how who, the draw who had a draw? Who, who had a draw against John Jones? DC, but... Well, it wasn't a draw. He lost, he but then lost. he got taken away. Yeah. Well, Because oh. he yeah. failed the drug test. Yeah, no contest. Oh. No contest, yeah. yeah. And then he, when he fought John Jones the first time, obviously, that was 2015. I think he, he took the L, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he beat Tony Johnson for a belt, Josh Barnett, um, Anthony Johnson, Gustafsson or whatever, mm -hmm. Gustafsson, his name. Yep. Um, then Anthony Johnson again, and then Ozdemir or whatever. Ozdemir, I forgot the guy's name. Anthony Ozdemir or Vulcan Ozdemir, Ozdemir. Uh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I yeah. can't say his name yeah. either. And yeah. then he beat Stipe. Now y'all know then how I feel. Then he beat Derek Lewis. And then he loses twice to Stipe. Mm -hmm. So is this like, yo, the guy had an insane streak and then the last two fights, it, it's done. He's out of his prime. Or do you think he just didn't have what it takes to beat Stipe? And that's why he said, all right, I'm done. If I can't beat this guy, I'm done. I think he'd been fighting and just competing for a very long time. Right? I mean, it wasn't a spring chicken anymore either, too. And then, yeah. And then I think just the fact, I mean, Fighting Stipe, he's, I feel like Stipe is a bigger body frame person. Like Cormier is fat. Right? I would say what it is. Like he's shorter, he's wide, he's fat. Right? Like, but he was going up a weight class. I'm not well, saying you're fat, why, dude. Why are you? I, I know you're not uh, saying I'm wait, fat. Why? Why all of a sudden? But, you, but why you throw? <laughs> yeah. And I didn't think you were still. Your eyes got like this and looked at me. He's like, wait, but why are you he talking about thinking he's calling you yeah, fat? But, yeah, yeah, but why, why are you bunching me into that? One, I though? didn't bunch you into it. You we just randomly about, just said, "Well, I'm not calling you fat," because he was like this at me. Yeah, why were you? Yeah, why are you? Like, I was just. I've never. I heard, said fat, and you're like. I've never. Who you calling fat? I've never heard you say anything bad about anybody ever. This is my That's first. That's not time. bad. How's that bad? This is America. You can't call nobody fat unless He's you're fat. Talking about a fighter. No, you you can't call skinny people can't call nobody fat. I can call the people fat here. Okay, Wait, you, but okay. if you could call a person fat, does that are you implying that you're? I'm fat. I was. I was. I was. I was once a fatty. McFatty. Fatty like me. McFatty? Like me, same thing. Okay, okay, but but him, I ain't never seen him fat. Yeah, hey, that's crazy that you would come off the out of pocket like that. You, you out of pocket. Damn, I you gotta apologize. Yeah, yeah, to yeah, DC? Sorry to fat shame. No, you weren't fat shaming. No, don't put that on <laughs> I him. Just say, fat shaming. I was just saying that like his body frame, he's shorter and he carries a lot more weight from being a shorter guy. Would you say he's thick? Oh yeah. Well, you got all excited when you said that too. That was weird. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So you, you're probably into Tyson Fury, too, huh? They got the same body shape. Yeah, you would. Whoa, 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 like whoa, whoa, whoa. I like that muffin top, dude. Oh, my whoa, God. don't put him in the same boat with Tyson Fury. He's not. They're no. both heavyweights that carry their no. body weight very well during fights, and they use it to their advantage when they strike. They use it to their advantage when they wrestle, but Tyson Fury doesn't wrestle, so we never see it. What do you mean? No, no, no. You can you can, you can put you can put Cormier great, in. Great yeah. explanation. Yeah. You can put Cormier in with Derrick Lewis, but not Tyson Derrick Fury. Derrick Lewis is not fat. He's that ultimate heavyweight who throws his weight around. Do you see the flying knee? Do you see the stuff uh, Cormier does? He goes and he don't get tired. Like you yeah, wouldn't Cormier, think. But I didn't call yeah. the Cormier fat. You you did. <laughs> what do you mean? I just said he looked like the baddest <laughs> boxer heavyweight on the planet. Tyson Cormier. Fury. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. No, he looks nothing like Tyson Fury. But okay, I'm. Just <laughs> Anyways, I just think that his body frame for heavyweight, he definitely wasn't gonna go two hundred five again. It was just too hard on him. Like almost killed himself doing it. And just competing with, like, Stipe being, I feel like, just the bigger man was also tough. But I can he, say, he had a great career. You know? I can say this, though. I can say this. When he went down to 205, I heard he was going down to 205, I thought he was going to look different. But he, <laughs> he looked... He looked he, <laughs> you can't get mad at him now. Can't no, 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 no. I didn't say nothing bad. I can, <laughs> but I can talk about it because, you know, come on, man. There's pictures of me on the internet, like, fucking look like fucking uh, fat as hell. Like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but this motherfucker... This guy went from heavyweight to <laughs> like heavyweight yeah. and looked the exact same. 
<laughs> Am I lying though? You're not. Thank you're you. Not, you're hey, not lying. Hey, you, you know what, bro? One thing we all love about you, you keep it 100. 100%. That's why I did. You were yeah, a good person. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I got nothing against Daniel Cormier, even though when I was fighting uh, Queen Mo, King Mo. And, and <laughs> wait, wait, where did you come from? Queen Mo. Queen Mo? Yeah, it's a fighter named, named King Mo. Can you pull up Queen Mo highlight? King is a fighter named King His Mo. His name's King Mo, but he called him Queen Mo. Oh, King. Oh, okay. And I had I had like uh, two fights with King Mo in Bellator. And Daniel Cormier and him, King Mo, I guess it was friends. And Daniel Cormier said some 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 something bad about me. I hadn't even really met him. Oh, mm. what'd he say? I can't remember, but I remember I was like, oh, you on my shit list. And how'd that make you feel when he said that? It made me feel like. Why are you going to talk shit about me? I don't know you like that. Mm. You know Did what I'm you saying? ever bring it up to him or, or let him know how you felt? No, because because when I met him, when I finally met him, years years has went years went by, and then I noticed that he had like a, a, a fake tooth and he had a tooth missing. I was like, oh, that's karma enough. He looked ugly as hell. <laughs> He's a jolly dude, though, man. He looked jolly as He's fuck. He's jolly. <laughs> Obviously, you still have something inside. No, that you no, I like, get. I'm be honest. I, I like Daniel Cormier. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Uh, and I think nice guy. He's a nice guy, and I think he does a great job at, at, at commentating and like stuff that. like that. Yeah. I like, I like that he he does good for the sport. I would like to see more MMA fighters doing stuff like that. And I want more MMA fighters to become uh, referees and judges. judges. So I like sure, all yeah. that. Did, did he like take Joe Rogan's spot? Like, is Joe Rogan still doing? No, it? Rogan's still doing it. He's just doing it for like the big only in the states pay per view cards. Got it. Makes yeah. sense. But he, he won't do it much longer, I don't think. Yeah, he's killing yeah. it on the podcast. When you get a couple hundred million from Spotify, you do what you want to do. And well, we got, also selling well, we, on it. All right, guys. I'm, so, I'm sorry to rush y'all, but we got to get going. All right, number Go, nine. Because we've been here too long. Number nine, uh, Jose Jado. <laughs> <laughs> Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo. Yeah. Jose, Jose Aldo. Yeah. Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo. My first time seeing Jose Aldo was when he fought... Conor McGregor. That was your first time seeing that's, that's a fight? My first time, my oh, first time no seeing way. a fight. I heard that he was a monster. I, yeah. I, I saw like a little bit of the lead up, and they say he hadn't lost in five years. Yeah. And I called him Scarface. He had this big scar on his face. Yeah, a lot of people I, call him Scarface. Yeah, yeah, I was like, man, this guy's finna beat the crap out of uh, McGregor. I was front row at that fight, dude. It was crazy. Like, I was excited for that one, right? Because there was like this beef between me and McGregor. He was like talking shit when I was an Ultimate Fighter with Uriah. And so I was like there, and the guy just got all this attention. I'm the champion at the time, and McGregor's getting all this attention, getting all this money. I'm jealous as fuck, you know what I mean? And so I'm there front row like, all right, Aldo's going to feed it to him, you know? Boom, 13 seconds later, he gets knocked out. Crazy, dude. But anyways, <laughs> Jose Aldo, one of my favorites. He's definitely on this list. I like that he's this high up. Absolute killer. I remember him, WC days, just... Crazy man. Yeah. How, how's he? How's he been doing since that fight with uh, Conor McGregor? Has he been like? He got paid very well for that fight. So I'm talking about how's he been in, in his career? Has he been winning he, a lot of fights? Uh, he did some losing then. That's when he lost to Max Holloway a few times, and um, and then he dropped the thirty fives, and then didn't he did okay, and then lose, and then did okay. So you lose. you think he deserved to be on the list higher than Max Holloway? Um. Yes, I do. And he yeah. lost to Max Holloway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, bro. Seven title defenses, crazy striking, crazy Muay Thai, yeah. UFC Hall of Fame. Yeah, that that fight could have been a fluke against McGregor if that fight didn't go down like that, and McGregor loses that. We don't know who McGregor would be, and Jose Aldo would be one of the for sure. I'm gonna tell y'all as a fighter, in my opinion, for sure, it was a fluke. McGregor got in his got in his mind. Like mm -hmm. Brazilians, they're a different breed. Mm -hmm. They take it 100 percent personal, and I think I think McGregor was a genius. He he he, is he smart. beat he beat. Uh, Jose, before they even got in the cage, mm -hmm. he was already defeated just by by the mental game that he, he was messing with. Him. Yeah, you never see Aldo start that fast, other than he did that flying knee to Cubs once. Him, but like he usually doesn't come out and like go that hard at someone, and he like rushed at him and bink. I, I I mean, before we move on from him, too, one of the greatest moments is when McGregor just goes and takes his belt in Brazil oh, at yeah. the press conference. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the most watched videos on YouTube. I'm sure everybody watching this has seen it, but for the first time watching it, like when you were watching that live, like I run, you know, I will come to the flavelas on the horseback and like, mm -hmm. I'm just like, are you, is that when he's wearing that big white coat? Yeah. He's like, I, I hops I, over with the belt. <laughs> bro. I mean, come on. It, you, everybody wanted to watch that a bazillion times, yeah. you know? And then he just takes the guy's belt. Why like, you say a bazillion, bazillion times? Why you say it like that though? You took a little dig at Jose right there. You say everybody would watch that a bazillion times. <laughs> a bazillion. Oh, my bad. 
All right, okay. <laughs> you, I thought you were taking I didn't a, even pick up on that. That's a good joke. Uh, no, no, it wasn't a joke. I thought but, you was really taking a dig at him. <laughs> I dig it. Josie Aldo, one of yeah. the greatest ever do it. Yeah, I hope he comes here. And we sit down with him. I'm gonna tell him about this joke. This Brazilian joke. The, the, this... Brazil, the Brazilian. The <laughs> Brazilian. Right, cool. Right. I know who I need to have on the podcast. Next <laughs> year. All, All right. right. Wait, no. wait. Before we move on, I got one more thing. When you were on the Ultimate Fighter, you were coaching for Team Faber, Uriah mm-hmm. Faber. Mm-hmm. And is that when McGregor called Uriah Faber a California skateboarder or something? Yeah. Yeah. You just because the way he's dressed, he's always dressed in like flip flops and jeans, and yeah, I called him a. You look like you're a 30 year old. Retired skateboarder, skateboarder or retired skateboarder or something. And then like that. why was he picking on you the whole fight? It wasn't that he was picking on me. He was trying to get under Uriah's skin, right? So I was the champion. I, ju- I just defended my belt against Barrow out in Chicago. I fly straight from my fight to help coach on the Ultimate Fighter. So I show up. Mm-hmm. And so a dig at Uriah was like saying that, like, I'm the, like pretty much saying, like, I'm a champion. He's not. He's like, who is this guy's a traitor? He's on your team. You're letting him be a champion. He called me like a little boy as I was walking in, you know? Which I looked like a little boy. Yeah. You know? But yeah, right here. Yeah. Real so, quick. We got to watch this real yeah. quick. It's 30 seconds. I thought they was going to fight each other, though. No, this is, this is right before he fought Aldo. 50. <laughs> 50 year old retired <laughs> skateboarder. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Number eight. Bring us in, Rampage. Number eight. Oh, uh, number eight is the GOAT himself, Conor McGregor. That's it. I, I'm a big fan of Conor McGregor. I, I, I'm going to be 100. I low, I low key, I'm low key jelly of him too because, yeah. because um, he's done everything in the sport that I wanted to do. Yeah. I wanted to box. I wanted to make mil- millions of... <coughs> I can't even get it up. Yeah. He, he's done everything in the sport. He did make millions. No, no, no. I'm talking about the millions that he made. He made, He's made like of, he made hundreds. Okay, of okay, yeah, I did make millions. I wanted to make hundreds of millions, like go. like he did. Honestly, I did, and uh, and uh, everybody does. And yeah. I, I, but but on top of that, I want I wanted to box, and he didn't get censored when he talked. Uh, mm. I got censored a little bit more. I was told, oh, you got to bring it down a little bit. You got to bring it down, like, which is crazy. I can't believe that. Yeah, I got told personally. Told that. I got told personally, like from here to here before your time. Crazy. Yeah, I got told. Personally. He also has some of the most craziest pay per view buys of all time. If you've seen 100%. who has like the most pay per view buys of all time, there's a there's a list and like um, number one is Mayweather and Pacquiao, and it did four point six million pay per view buys. Number two is Mayweather versus McGregor, four point three million pay per view buys. It's not too far behind. Then De La Hoya and Mayweather is two point four, and then UFC two twenty nine Khabib versus McGregor is two point four. Crazy. Yeah. So like he. The top ten pay per view buys are all McGregor or Mayweather. Yeah, yeah. And so. so I think that I think that the thing about McGregor, he had a whole country behind him. Mm-hmm. What? What? I think he had England and Ireland behind him, and and then all the Irish people in America. Mm. You know how how fighting an Irish go. Oh yeah. And, and I don't rate him as one of the the best fighters, but I think he was the best thing for this sport. He yeah. took our sport to another 100%. level. Couldn't yeah. Made Couldn't it out. He experience. made our sport a household name along with himself. I met him in Saudi Arabia. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to bother him, but he came up to me and shook my hand. We talked and and took a picture. And, and I'm an even bigger fan of him mm-hmm. now. He's a, he's a good dude. You should see the photo they took. They look phenomenal. You can't, you can't even see it. <laughs> it's completely black. Oh, I actually yeah. seen this. Yeah. You posted on your Instagram. <laughs> That's right. She was hilarious. Right, why did you post Who it? took the photo? Um, Adele. This uh, the uh, fighter name Adele. I can't. I know who that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He sent it to me at like three in the morning. Yeah. He's like, yo, look at this photo I got of me and McGregor. I'm like, what do you mean? It's a black square. I'm like, it won't load. He goes, no, that's the photo. <laughs> yeah. Man, I used to be like, like obviously very jealous of what, you, uh, what McGregor was doing because I was a champion. He wasn't even a champion yet. He's already making more money than me, getting more, like just everything, you know, like doing it all. And then obviously he backed everything up, won titles, two division champion, but then really got to think about how much work that motherfucker put in. Not only just on the training aspect of it, but, like, I know what it takes to be a champion, all the media you got to do, all the interviews you got to do, and I was a sliver of what that guy was doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like you'd be jealous all you want, but then mm-hmm. you realize all the work that goes yeah, into it, you yeah. know? Yeah, he deserved, so, he deserved every penny, yeah. every every bit of it. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And also you got to give a little love to his manager, Adi, who put together one of the craziest business deals of all time with Proper 12 mm-hmm. and the way they just went and sold that thing for billions of dollars mm-hmm. because the payout structure, basically the way it worked out, you know, they got so much money, but they got also money over time and just everything about him, it's, he was batting 100 on everything, you know? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. let's go to number seven, Rampage. Number seven, Chuck Liddell. That's it, one Chuck of the goats. Chuck Liddell, Chuck Liddell. 
I'm gonna tell you, I, I I love Chuck Liddell for a few reasons. For the mutual respect before the first time that that we um fought each other in Pride, you know, he told me like, look, I know it's gonna be me and you next in the tournament. Let's go have a drink. Boom. After that, none but respect, mad love for Chuck Liddell, and and the other reason because Chuck Liddell made me a millionaire. Mm -hmm. You know, it was oh, yeah. that fight with him. It it changed the, my 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 life and my 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 parents' life and. You know, I, I got to, um, you know, feel like all my hard work in, in, in this sport was, um, you know, it was, it was like finally for something, you know what I'm saying? Because that was like my biggest payday. You know, your first time you get a real, you know how you feel. Your yep. first time you get your big oh, yeah. payday, you were like, oh, I finally like, I finally like. It's about to run out to me like, I fucking made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I made it. Yeah. yeah. And and Chuck did a, did a, uh, he did a lot for this sport. And he was a, a reigning champion. Um, I, I think I think Chuck is is should be higher up on this list for for what how many fans that he brought over to the sport mm. and, and what he what he's done for this sport. I definitely think one thing that I I didn't appreciate about Chuck. I'm pulling up the stats right now. Is that I feel like the the UFC definitely looked out for him, but I feel like they definitely should have maybe not let him fight all those fights towards the end of his career. He didn't need it. Mm. And I feel like they just kept feeding him fights, but to go from Rashad Evans to Shogun to Rich Franklin to Tito Ortiz to then that golden boy fight and just everything about that. He had such a successful career beating Randy Couture, Horn, Couture again, Sabral, Tito Ortiz. I mean, holding the belt during all those title defenses. I just felt like at that point, like that, that part of his career, I wish someone would have stepped in. Because he's so iconic. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to see that because I grew up loving him. I grew up with him, you know, when I was 20 years old when I met him. So, like, yeah, I yeah. just wish I didn't have to see that part. I got a, I got a question. Uh, please answer this honestly. And fans in the comments, please tell me. Because I really, I really do want to know this. Um, in my opinion, I think the UFC, the way they promote some fights and, and like, what he, what he said, I think that they, they do shit wrong. I think they do stuff stupid. Uh, I think... If Chuck Liddell would have been fighting people that had no chance against him, I think fans would still tune in to watch Chuck Liddell mm -hmm. fight. Mm -hmm. uh, please tell me if I'm wrong. Like, no, would you right. would you guys still? So watch? you want them to give him easier fights? I, yeah. After, after I don't know about that. No, no, no. Yeah. Listen, when he get when he got older, after I fought, him, he lost his belt. At least after he, how many times did he fight after Rashad knocked him out? How many times? You guys know? I don't know. I right? don't know. So after that. If I was a promoter and he had four, four, three more fights. Okay, so if I was a promoter, he got knocked out, lost his belt, and then he fights. I don't know if he who he, I don't know if he fought Rashad right after me. I don't know if he had a fight in between. He gets knocked out twice. I was like, okay, he still loves fighting. Let's keep him in there. Let's give him people who has no chance of knocking him out. But we could just still put him in there. And you you a promoter, you know how to build fights. You build hypes around the fights. It could be like almost no name people. Would you still tune in if you're a fan of Chuck Liddell? Would you still tune in and watch him fight No Names, or would you only want to watch him fight the best in the world? I have mixed opinions about it, right? So, I definitely think that there's a, a bad thing where they try to build names for new guys coming in off older guys that should be on their way out. Anyways, I do believe that there's there like for instance Tony Ferguson, right? He's fighting this weekend, yeah. He's fighting Patty Pimlet. That's a perfect example, right? That yeah. guy's lost five fights in a row. I think yeah. he should have been cut already. Right. Um, I hope he goes out there and gets the win, but. That's a perfect example. Or what they, like, BJ Penn, keep letting him fight and feeding people, which I think BJ Penn should be on this list. Um, For sure. Um, BJ Penn, BJ Penn, real quick, is on the list. Oh, is he? I'm just saving him as one of the three because I'm adding him. Okay. So before I get killed by the comment section. Okay. Um, but the reason why the UFC is so big is because the best fight the best. They don't, like, they don't do the boxing bullshit where they pat everyone's records. You know what I mean? They don't, like, say, like, I could have fucking them 20 and 0, but I fought a bunch of turds, right? They make like I'm no matter what, I'm fighting someone that's my level, I'm fighting the best. Like they yeah. put the best against yeah. the best. I agree, I agree with you on that. Yeah. But like say say, yeah, you 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 in there and you're in your prime and you coming up the best fight the best. But you got this one guy that's yeah. an iconic superstar. Okay. He's on his way out. He's he's got knocked out that. twice. You know what I'm saying? I like give that. and and the, you know, you can still he you can still make money off him. He mm -hmm. can still earn money, he can mm -hmm. still do what we do. Cause at the end of the day. It's not only about money. For me, it's it's like ninety five percent about money and five percent like 
I love what I do. I'm going to keep it 100. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I don't love the money, but I know I need the money for what I need to do with my life. And mm -hmm. with my, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I fight. I do fight for money. That's my job. That's my career. But I still love this job, right? So I still want to fight. I'm 45. I still want to fight. I still mm -hmm. want to fight a couple of times. And I learned it from BJ who retired and then came back when he shouldn't have came back. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to retire and then be like, miss it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Like when Ronda Rousey lost to Holly Holm or whatever, then how many how many fights did she had till she till she fought Amanda Nunes? Right? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Right, but she shouldn't. I wouldn't have gave her Amanda Nunes mm. at that time. I was like, that's that's your cash cow. Yeah, so, but there was no other female athletes that were gonna even get a chance to Amanda Nunes. You know, like I think Rousey was it at the time. Right, yeah, but that did, changed. But did Amanda Nunes make the UFC as much money as uh, Ronda Rousey? Probably not. Thank mm -hmm. you. So that's that's my mm -hmm. thing. At me from as a fan as a fan and as a promoter standpoint like yeah. why are they doing that so that's yeah. so i'm i'm wrong on my thinking you if you was a promoter you wouldn't give uh i, I wouldn't Chuck personally. Liddell. It, then don't fight because i'm not gonna feed fake fights when the fans are gonna then hate me as a promoter i'm just strict strictly talking from a business you, you would never make every fan happy but i think a lot of fans but would they be, would for sure hate my my quality and they would for sure disapprove of my taste and moving forward for future fights as a promoter all right fans in the comments let me know if right i mean i don't want to yeah. be discredited yeah. and i don't want people to think i'm staging fights i don't need none of this like yeah i feel you with yeah. saying so to not to cut you off but to mm -hmm. move forward these are the top six mm -hmm. i have a wild card that i'm throwing in here okay i'll let you guys know when but we're gonna run through the top six real quick and this is where it gets heated so tj okay. you start us off with number six randy couture american hero <laughs> like that guy just like I mean did great for the sport you know and I feel like he stood up for a lot of the fighters um great champion I think he was a role model for older older athletes mm -hmm. and I think that's good like older people need to know that they can still do stuff at an older age he came into the sport like what 35 past his prime or whatever mm -hmm. and he did good he was a uh, was a great champion I become a bigger fan of him when he beat Tim Sylvia even though I'm a big fan of Tim Sylvia I just thought this little guy beating the bigger guy, yeah. and the way and, his, and the way he did it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Do we do we agree though that Randy Couture, with the five time UFC champion, you know, two weight classes, lightweight and heavyweight, exceptional wrestling, you know, obviously continued late into his 40s. He was crazy, in my opinion, crazy at the way he had takedown defense and takedown style, like double leg and stuff, because of his wrestling, because of his size, he wasn't the biggest dude. So to win those types of fights, I feel like. Definitely one of the first to put that game on there. And now running Extreme Couture, he has Eric Nixick and a huge camp with Sean Strickland and Aljo and Francis Ngannou. So obviously he knows what he's doing as a coach and a trainer, translates. I mean, I feel definitely he deserves to be at six. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. We all good on that? Yeah, That's yeah. a big one. That's I want to make sure one. we get yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, number five is Khabib. Nor uh, I'll, let, I'll, let, I'll let Rampage. No, oh, no, no. no. This is all you. Yeah. K Khabib Nagmanigov. <laughs> Nigga made off. Nigga made off. I yeah. said it right, then. Yeah, no, yeah, pretty close. But this is where I'm throwing in the wild card. For number five, I, I would probably move Khabib back, right? So we would push everything back one. And I'm throwing in BJ Penn at number five. And oh, here's the wow. reason why. BJ Penn, to me, in my personal opinion, was one of the first, like, scrappy, young, small guys kind of getting the double belt, right? Being a double champ. Doing it at a time where people didn't really do that. Taking fights. Licking his gloves with blood. And the mentality of him coming out of Hawaii, we hadn't seen a lot of Hawaiian champions. We hadn't seen a lot of fighters in Hawaii come to this level, like to be a championship level yet, but doing it at a, at a, at a high efficiency, right? Like coming in there and really being the prodigy in jujitsu, right? Being one of the oh, first yeah, Americans yeah. to win as a black belt. Yeah. He entered the tournament as a brown belt, I believe. So there's a lot of things about BJ Penn. I feel like people don't give him the credit because once again, got fed fights towards the end of his career that mm. he didn't need. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like the UFC did him justice there, but I know he's the face of UFC gyms. I know they love him, so there's no bad blood. But I just feel like this guy's legacy and what he did for the sport of MMA forever. So you're taking Khabib off? No, I'm just pushing it back. So I'm okay. putting, I'm basically, Khabib but, would be six, BJ would be five. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's hard for me to put him in front of Khabib when Khabib was just undefeated and like hardly even lost a round. But, but yeah, but, but Khabib, he, he hasn't had as many fights as BJ Penn. But against who? I mean, who he beat? Yeah, who did Habib never lose a round to? Name one guy besides McGregor. Mm, the, what, do you, what do you mean? I don't know what like, saying. name one guy Habib fought that was good besides McGregor. Oh. Uh, I mean, he finished um, Play the Jeopardy Gaethje music. pretty easiest. He fought uh, Gaethje's? Mm -hmm. He armbarred him like easy. 
Um, and gay cheese is good, huh? Mm-hmm. Gay cheese is good. Yeah, I mean, I can't That's discredit Habib. I don't want to come off like yeah. that. I'm just saying, yeah. like, B- look who BJ Penn had a fight to win straps. Justin Poirier. Uh, Could he beat? Edson Barbosa. Michael Johnson. I mean, none of those guys are on this list, obviously. Yeah, and, and then go look up BJ Penn's wins real quick. So I, I'm going to have to side with uh, Bear on this. Um, mm-hmm. I, I like Khabib. I think he's a- <laughs> call him Khabib. No, I said his name, Khabib. Oh, okay. Good thing you. No, I just. <laughs> he, he did say Khabib. They, they don't, don't play. Know. Yeah, you do. I really don't know. Yeah, you, 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 <laughs> Look at it. Look at I'm neutral. I'm like Switzerland. Look at who BJ one. Penn fought. Jens Pulver, Matt Hughes, George St. Pierre, Henzo Gracie, Leota Mashida, Rodrigo Gracie, Matt Hughes. To, oh, my God. Gomi is insane. Matt, Matt Sarah. Sarah. Oh, come on. Come on, bro. This is an insane roster. Jens Pulver. Come on. It's a sane roster. Get him, Rampage. Yeah, yeah. So I have to agree with him. Get him, Rampage. Because right. nothing, nothing, nothing against uh, Khabib. I think he was. I think he was a great champion, mm-hmm. and it's good to be what twenty nine and zero. I know he's twenty nine and zero because I saw it on on social media recently that he should have waited till he was thirty and zero. Yeah, it's a better number. But yeah. it, I understand why he did it. But I had to agree with him. But one thing about BJ Penn, he one of the greatest of all times. I don't think we'll ever see a a, a person with uh, like BJ Penn. Again, he he's like really good with his hands, and he was like so flexible. I think he invented the rubber guard the way he was, you know, doing jujitsu. I've never seen anything like that before. Mm-hmm. And then, but him licking his the blood off his gloves, and I always, I always insane. insane. But I always wondered, Tim, if you guys think this about him, do you think he got his red wings? <laughs> God. Possibly, yeah. possibly, but yeah. I'm not. I'm talking about fighting. Right? I'm sorry, I, you know what my mind. He licking blood, you know. <laughs> what did you want to lick off BJ Penn? Just say it. No, I don't want to lick anything. I'm saying, do you think he got his red rings? Oh, red rings. Red, red. I got big lips there. I got trip over something. <laughs> red wings. He already think about licking red stuff and stuff. Yeah. No, I, I don't know about that. Maybe. I mean, BJ <laughs> Penn, BJ Penn is okay. Insane so BJ grappling. Penn at five. Bro, gotcha. think about just his jujitsu jitsu game alone. It's fair. As an American to go to Brazil, right? As an American to go yeah. win. As an American just to win in general and being one of the first. I mean, yeah. bro, come on. Like, yeah. I'm not going to argue with TJ because TJ is a champion and he'd probably kill me. <laughs> Rampage I could argue with because I could probably double leg him and just hold him <laughs> to the ground like Habib. No. Yeah. I'm kidding, bro. I've been training. You know that. I'm getting a little cocky. Yeah, yeah he is. Yeah. He's I'm getting a little cocky. He's been TJ. sparring nah, boxes kidding, and stuff. I watched. It's good. Everybody knows he'd kill me. No worries. I probably right, but I, I, But around. I'm agreeing with him about that yeah. BJ right. Penn. But okay. okay. So right. we're good with that. Now now let's. Uh, we, we, let's hey, but we can let the. How about the fans vote? Let the fans. Yeah, yeah. All I like right. that. All right. Well, let them know. Let them know how you want them to, to do that one. Guys, we we want we need y'all help. We want y'all to vote. Who who would y'all have at number five? Khabib Manigoff or. I can't My focus. nigga, I can't focus. I can't, <laughs> I can't focus, dog. <laughs> or BJ Penn. You want a BJ? It's so crazy. Like I can't focus. The guy, is, I. It's so good. You're one of the best to ever yeah. do this, dog. Uh-huh. You, you seriously, you're one of the best to ever do this. <laughs> if you didn't do this, I'd hope you'd be a weatherman or something, and you could just be uh, funny get, the whole time. I'll get fired on my first day. Why? Because because some words I can't pronounce right. Like what? Like, like this Nurga motherfucker Madoff? last night. How you, I, how, how do you say it? Nurga Madoff. How in the fuck you can say that? I don't know. I used to say it one more time. I'm going to copy Nurga it. Madoff. Number Nagoff. <laughs> I got to listen to my... Did I say it wrong? Come on, let's move on. Let's we go. don't got yeah, time. Number four. number four. Come on, come on. Demetrius Johnson. Yes. It's a great one. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the guy's just uh, so, right. like, cerebral when he fights, you mm-hmm. know? Like, he's the guy that game plans. He's the guy that watches tape. He's a true martial artist. Definitely belongs up here. Mm-hmm. Hey, he's he's great. He's great. The little things that he do, like he's like a little character, right? Yeah, I, I like it. Uh, he got the perfect nickname. Yeah. I, I look at overall, not only just fighting. I don't know if you guys noticed that. I look yeah, at course, yeah. sportsmanship and all this stuff too. I, I I really I really liked him. I think the it was the UFC's biggest mistake with when it comes to a fighter by trading him for mm. that damn flop that they traded. But for. it's a business for them. He never sold pay per views. Yeah, but how many pay per views did the guy they get? What's the guy name that got knocked out by Mazadov? With a flying knee, was his name? That was Ben, ben Askren. Askren. Mm. You love him though, right? I don't got nothing against him personally, but I just yeah. don't like I don't like his fighting style. He mm. just take you down, lay on top of you. I'm a wrestler too, and I hate yeah. that, right? Mm-hmm. So I just think that that you was, just don't like guys laying on top of you, so you hate him. Exactly. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I don't. I just it's not my thing. Yeah. But so that's what I'm saying. I think that was. I think he should be in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. I think the UFC. He will be. I think the UFC was dumb for trading. I know he's not selling. I understand. Okay, he's not making the money. I understand, mm-hmm. but you promote the guy better, I guess. Yeah, you you the promoter. If if this guy is champion and he's fucking everybody up, 
and you can't make money off of him. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's your fault? Is, yeah, it's just because he's not willing to be a character. He's yeah. not willing to talk shit. He's not willing to do the McGregor. Like, I was never that guy either. Like, I never got... I got some big promoter fights because I fought someone that did talk shit. I fought Cody Garbrandt, right? And, like, that's when I started getting some more some more attention and stuff. But I wasn't a guy that was going to go out and, like, cause drama and be a character. And he wasn't either. He's, like, a super polite, nice guy. Like I yeah. said, true martial artist. He's very intelligent, too. Yeah, like very intelligent, different. Yeah. And we had, we had him here on the podcast. He's a new Jackson athlete. Oh, awesome. And, uh, obviously, one thing about DJ's... Um, really loves technique mm. really loves understanding the crafts right he was out here with jalen turner and t-rex and and all these guys and really showing distance and control and kind of like how he would punch how he would get out goes the one becomes a champion never never strays away from you know adversity mm. you know gets knocked out comes back yep. like I, without a doubt no matter what anybody says ufc any historian in fights this guy belongs in the top four or five yeah. no matter what besides anybody else on and i've seen fight um and besides John Jones, I think that um, I think he has like one of the highest fight IQs. Mm -hmm. Just about this, and by this guy right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Him, him too. But fuck TJ, I'm not happy with him today. <laughs> Stop coming well, on me, dude. And I, so, and I left TJ off the list, and so did a lot of the people here because we said Rampage and T TJ can't be on this list. But uh, one thing, one thing everybody said about you is that you deserved. Uh, I think on the list they had you. I'm going to just say it real quick before we do the. I top don't want to hear. Hold I don't on, care. hold on. I just want to say it one time. Everybody had you at 16 uh, as a champion and and as someone who basically what what. Let me just say it's not a big deal, bro. Everybody agrees. It's not like I'm saying nothing. It's not like you were. No, I'm, I'm gonna cut you off. I'm gonna say this. This is the thing about me. I I I don't know if you guys ever noticed when when I'm fighting them, I'm in a cage and and they call my name. I never like raise my hand up before my fight and do. I I I, I don't fight for glory. I don't I don't fight for none of this. That's why I never never um, cared about being in the UFC Hall of Fame and anything like that. I I don't I don't fight for none of that. I know, but bro, you're iconic and yeah, on I, a podcast. I, don't get upset. No, I'm not getting. Up, I'm not yeah. getting upset. Don't take me wrong. Don't. Yeah. I, I appreciate the fans and I love every. Last single one of of the Rampage fans out there because that's why I do what I do. That's why I joke that's around. Why and make, and that's why because I love you guys, right? But don't get it twisted. I didn't fight for fame. I didn't fight to be. I didn't. I didn't fight for this. You know what I'm saying? That's not yeah. why. That's not why I fought. So let's 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 move, move on. Let's move but on. I just gave you your flowers real quick, and then right, TJ. I put them in everybody had um, one really good common denominator about you. They said that your fight IQ was one of the highest in 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 the UFC. Not today, it's mind and mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and then also everybody had you at 23. All right. Um which was in there. So I'm sure nice. there would be arguments to have you higher or lower. It doesn't matter. You're one of the best 135ers of all time though, so it doesn't even Appreciate matter it. there. And I'll say that. I'm sure everybody would agree. I would have said it too if he wasn't making fun of me all day with uh Nicky Rod. I would have said that too. Bro, you walked in with lingerie pants. Like you did it to yourself, dog. Bro, you're 62, you're 220, you're a fighter. And you can beat people up, and you walk in here wearing a thong as jeans. Like, like, I'm just doing it because it's making you mad. I actually like the pants. Oh, now you oh, like it. Okay. No, don't do all that. Thanks, don't thanks, do all that. Thanks, no, no, no. Thanks, no, no. Thanks. I'm just doing it because hey, it makes you mad. Hey, 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 number one fight IQ <laughs> yeah. in MMA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, over, I, over John Jones and over Mighty Mouse. Just Mouth. so you know, before we go to the top three, this is the big one, and we're going to wrap it up right now. I do like your pants, and I do like the fact that you put effort into how you dress now because you're getting lean and you look good. And I love the fact that every time he comes in here, he goes straight to all the girls. He goes, hey, how do you like my dress? How do you like my drip? And I said, Rampage, it's not your dress. It's your jeans. He goes, no, no, my style. I go, yeah, but they think you're wearing a dress or something, so you got to be, you know. But I just want to say I do appreciate everything that you do for everybody here. All right, number three, top three. Here we go. This is the big, this is the big time. All right. Rampage, you do number three. Number three is John Jones. I, I like I like John Jones uh, personally, I, I do like him. But um, as a fighter, I think he's the dirtiest fighter on the planet. Mm -hmm. I think he's the best fighter on the planet, and and that he he's so good that he don't have to be dirty. And uh, I'm not even talking about um, I'm not even talking about like him cheating and stuff like that in the sport. I'm well, talking like eye pokes and things like eye that. eye pokes and 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 that dirty ass knee kick. That that, that what you call it? Oh yeah, the that oblique, oblique kick. kick. Yeah, yeah, uh, and even even his elbows, mm. his elbows were illegal, mm. but he was doing it and he got away with it for years. I don't know. I don't think he does it that much no more. But mm. if you watch John Jones fight when he when he does the elbow, he's he's so methodical, he's so smart. He spins around and he elbows you. He, he stands in front of you when you do it, but when he spins around, he gets it in the back of the head. Oh, got you. Yeah, but that's not really illegal if you're on your feet. 
Do you get hit somebody in the back of the head in, in MMA on yes, your feet? Yes, yeah, not, it's not my fault that it hit you in the back of the head because you didn't move your head. Like, on your feet, it's different on the ground. On your feet, I, I mean, knockouts happen like that all the time in the back of the head. Like, the club you hit you in the back of the head, that's not, that's not illegal. It's only when they're on the ground, you can't hit them in the back, behind the head. So, if, so oh, I didn't know. You know, mm-hmm. I've been fighting. For, I mean, as far as I understand, I, as far I, I as I understand, because, like. Cause you know, whenever you watch boxing, they, they punch you in the back of the head. Yeah. They, one fighter got, got turned to a vegetable for that. That's you know? right. You yeah. know, so mm-hmm. that's, I just think that's, like, okay, me as a fighter, I have honor when I fight. I, I don't want to, like, kill or yeah, maim my opponent. I, I mm-hmm. want him to keep fighting. But, but listen, that's me just being salty because John Jones kicked my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so, but I think he's the best. I, I would have him at number one. I'd no have John way. Jones number one. I want, I want to keep a note of that. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I just want to say something. I think natural talent, this guy, I've watched him spar in the gym before, mm-hmm. and I've watched him train. Obviously, I watched him fight a lot of friends. Probably the most naturally gifted MMA fighter of all time. I mean, dude, a perfect example is, is that he goes out, defends his world title, and then fails a drug test for cocaine. <laughs> Four weeks before his fight. You know what I mean? Like, so this motherfucker was out in Vegas railing lines four weeks before his fight and wins a world title. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I'm training my fucking ass off for 12 weeks and doing everything right. Like, you know, and this motherfucker's just out like partying. And he makes it look easy. He mm. makes it look mm. easy. Effortless. Did you hear why he said he did that? I think he's like an excuse in case he loses. It makes oh sense. wow! Wait, yeah. wait, wait! Hold up! I've never heard that. Yeah, yeah. So where if he loses, he's like, ah, I didn't train my hardest. He was like, ah, oh, I was out partying yeah. a week before, two weeks before. Yeah. Wow, that yeah. is a that is a great. I like that one. You get to party and you get to win, <laughs> and then if you lose, you still got to party. Blaming it on party. Oh my god, that's amazing! I'm yeah. gonna have to use that. Yeah. Rampage, yeah. sorry I couldn't show up today. <laughs> yeah, sorry, dude. <laughs> didn't know if you were gonna make it. I'm already in Vegas though, Doc. Yeah. Uh, who do we got number two? Number two, we got George Shank Pierre. Nice. Yeah, nice. I, I I I love I love Saint Pierre. I, I remember uh, the first fight I saw him fight uh, was was against Matt Matt Hughes. Mm, great fight. And uh, the, the, their first fight, mm-hmm. and, and uh, Saint Pierre was doing great. But then he got well, he got unbarred or something. He got or he lost or some somehow he lost. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. How I can't he remember exactly. I know what he lost. Yeah. yeah, but that was my first fight with and seen and I saw. Uh, I said, this guy, this guy's a star. This guy's gonna be one of the best. Mm-hmm. And he had the whole country of Canada behind him. And he's so and he's so like respectful. He always reminded me of um Sean Clark Van Damme. Yeah. And he and he just <laughs> improved, he just from there he just went on a tear. Yeah, for me, he's a true professional. I've got to train with him as well, too. He's a super cool dude. Um, and does everything to like uh, like a professional should. You know, mm-hmm. the way he does his strength conditioning, the way he eats, the way he recovers, like the way he game plans, like he was like the first one that did like super good game planning and watching tape and going out to a fight like that. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. me trying to think someone before that. I mean, I think he's the one that did it. You and know, I, I, I respect the way for that. And I respect him because his wrestling got so good. Yeah. He's not even a wrestler. His wrestling got so good. He was out there wrestling better than other fighting wrestlers and, and doing better than them in wrestling. It's because he would he would go, and so if he wanted to get better at boxing, he'd go to the best boxing gym in the world. If he wanted to get better at wrestling, he started wrestling with the Canadian Olympic wrestling team, right? So he would go and find these niches of what they're good at. If he wanted to get best at jiu-jitsu, he'd go and train with uh, Gordon Ryan's team. And what's the what's their coach's name? Um, always John Denner? Yeah, Donner, yeah, yeah. Always walked around with a rash guard? Yeah, yeah, I love it, dude. Um, yeah, he, he also he was would, the first to wear uh, suits to press conference and, and take that fighting. Yeah. Like, hey, guys, we're real athletes. We're not just fighters. Let's, let's treat ourselves that way so we could get big deals. I think he did a lot for the sport that a lot of people never talk about, which is legitimize the athletic the mm-hmm. athlete part of it. Not athleticism in terms of like how you train, but he did that too. Yeah. But he approached it to a to it a certain extent where you started looking at guys like, well, that's a that's a professional. He's not athlete. just a cage fighter. Yeah. So so you think if 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 I would have been if I would have started wearing suits to the press conference no. and stuff, I would have no. I don't yeah, think he hell yeah. Good he could have been dude, he could have been like he wouldn't look he could have been looked like a pimp though. You know what yeah, I mean? He, he could have been like the had, pimp vibes. Yeah, but you had so much style, bro. Like you didn't need a suit. Everybody loved you for who you are. Yeah, I I, I, I hate wearing suits and yeah. stuff like that. You don't. I don't think you need to be in a suit. But you know, press. Uh, yeah. Nah, I liked you the way you were. All right, so <laughs> he's getting all mad now because he thinks we don't like him in a suit. We like you in a suit too. But you were the first to wear a chain and like make this thing next level. You also brought character. You also were yeah. wearing those big Timberlands, yeah. like. You had the big, you know, the Metro like when PCS, I, the whole thing. Because you weren't on this. Like, when I say, sorry to interrupt you, but, like, when I say, like, Tito Ortiz was the first character, like, you were one of them as well, too. Like, Amen. But you were before even the UFC, you know what I mean? And being a character and having the chain and how, like, 
you know what I mean? Like that's helped develop the sport. Yeah, so much. a guy that's housed and stuff, he can't come to a press conference in a suit. Huh? It just don't look <laughs> right. Huh? I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, he, I wouldn't have liked it. He said that you know he took it to the next level, and made more money. He probably did make more money just by coming in wearing a suit, look no, more professional. You got way more brand deals, and you got way more like deals as a person forever. Like like the dude could be in Karate Kid movies or like Monster Inc or something. He was in like the Canadian version, but you were like a persona that people live for forever. No one wakes up in the morning and goes, I'm going to be like George St. Pierre and goes to the Brooks Brothers and buys a suit. No. They wake up in the morning and they go, I'm going to be like Rampage and they start slamming people in the street. Like, you have a persona that will live forever. Oh, okay, okay. I'll take it. And <laughs> number one, we have somebody that I'm a really big fan of, somebody I really look up to, somebody who I think really deserves to be here at number one. Mm. Besides John Jones, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, now that we're bringing up his name, it's like that is a competition right there for number one. It's John Jones versus Anderson Silva. Beautiful, yeah. I mean, so, and dude, just that's, that's a toss up. It just didn't. He when he would fight, it almost didn't seem like real life. Like I remember when he fought Forrest Griffin, and mm -hmm. he was like in the Matrix. He just like Brink. dropped him. Like some of the stuff he did was just insane. Bro, it surprised the hell out of me when he lost a um, Wiseman like that. Though. Oh, Wiseman, yeah. Oh. It surprised me when he lost the wide man. Yeah. Wide man. The yep. Three wise men. The three wise men. It's not wise. It's, it's Chris, wide. It's Chris Wiseman. Wide man. He's a Chris Whiteman. Not white. Wide. Wide man. Chris Wideman. Yeah. Wide. There we go. Yeah. I'm sorry. Are you good? Yeah. Yeah. But but yeah. he lost to Chris Wideman in a unique fashion because he shattered his leg. And then what happened to Chris Wideman? Shattered his leg. So kind of a unique, weird like. Turn of events there. No, no, no. That was a rematch. Oh, it's right. He knocked him out with the hook. He knocked and him my out. My man. Look at bring out the knowledge. Yeah, because he because he That's was right. He was he was yeah, like, he was like playing, playing games. He was playing around. Yeah. And I was like, that, and look, I didn't know who Chris Weitzman was at that time. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh my God, like Anderson, like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah. But he's still a goat. Yeah, great. I think that hadn't he had had he took him serious. I don't think he took him serious. Had he took him serious, but it's because he was able to do that and win fights is why he is the goat, right? Mm -hmm. Like he was able to be that flashy, like unreal. Like people don't do that. It's a video game. It's a cartoon. It's like what the fuck? Like yeah. I couldn't imagine just being like fuck and then snap kicking a guy and dropping him. You know, it's like damn. It's sick. the definition of what people think they look like when they want to fight. Mm -hmm. Like all slick and yeah. hands down here and dink. Like yeah. it just not even comes out. Like his his hand just flies across the ring and it just all of a sudden it knocks you out. Like mm -hmm. the dude's style was so like I don't know. I mean, he had that Bumblebee logo on him for a while. How he'd like buzz around, mm -hmm. kind of like. It's, He's, he was very symbolic of what people wanted to think they look like as a mm -hmm. fighter, but his martial art is on a whole nother level. Like, he is a true martial artist. Mm -hmm. yeah. He still fights. Then he went and beat up some very, very famous boxers. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Forgot about that. Mm -hmm. He did. He did great. He did great in boxing. Yeah, I mean, he fought Jake Paul, but he also beat one of Mexico's, like, greatest boxers of all time. And then he also had one of the craziest careers. I mean, 10 consecutive title defenses, his yeah. striking, everything about him, longest reigning uh, UFC middleweight champion. The guy's like one of a kind. And we also sponsor his kids, Gabriel and Khalil. Oh, damn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anderson Silva was the first athlete I ever worked with besides Rampage. It was like 20 years Bro, old. Bro, the Jackson athlete roster is crazy sick, dude. Yeah. 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 Thanks sick. to you for bro, believing it. Bro, not only that, bro, it's gr it's growing fast. It's like sneaky, sneaky fast. Like, I I, I saw, uh, what's his name? Wonderboy wearing it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was and playing he, that game today. He's, he's not an athlete yet, is he? No, we, he, I he, sent him some stuff. Though oh, you said that. I thought he bought Okay. Yeah. Bro, I'm talking about. But still, he ain't getting paid to wear it. He's just wearing it because he likes he it. He's also I mean, it's great, like, great. I'm wearing person. this because I like it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like. Good man. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's. I mean, it's funny. I was telling you today, like how it started out as like men's jewelry. It's like, I love it now, even just as much for the fashion. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's yeah. sick. Dude. And also, I appreciate guys like you that do believe in it and the vision, because I've been ranting and raving about where we want to take this brand for two years now, three years now. We're trying to do it fast, but it is cool to see guys like you. You're so iconic and you do believe in the vision. It obviously motivates us and the, the team here. Dude, I'm even wearing Jackson earrings. Y'all didn't even know it. No. -uh. You didn't even know it. Yeah, we, we sell real diamond solid gold on our website. Jackson.com, and it's becoming one of our best sellers now. Dope. We sell solid gold chains and everything about our, our solid diamonds. I mean, everything we do is quality. That's mm -hmm. why we're sh becoming such a leader in men's jewelry. True. But now that we have club.jackson.com where you buy all the clothes and all the performance gear, I feel like everything's going to go But I, I feel like you, you've been so successful because you make jewelry for 
anybody, yeah, everybody, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. different tiers, right? Yeah, yeah. And then and the clothes, I'm so happy that you, I'm so happy that you start making clothes because, like, the clothing industry, like, they not they 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 went a different way from where I, I where I wanted it to go. Like with the stuff, you go to the mall and you look for stuff like, come on, man, you, for, especially big guys like me, I can't find I can't find stuff like that, and, it's, yeah. and it just it just looks good. But on on, on another note. I just want to say, I hope you guys enjoyed this, what we did for you. Bear put this together for you guys. 30 years of UFC. We left three people off. We want you guys to type in the comments, right? Mm -hmm. who, you, who you guys think we should be, who you guys think should be on the list. And I, I want to know personally, I want to know what main event was your first one when you, you know, your first. Mm. I want to know who was your first main event in the UFC? Who was your first? Main event in the UFC. I want to hear that in the comments as well. Yeah, and I definitely want to say thank you to TJ for taking the time and dealing with us. Me and Rampage have <laughs> been, been arguing about this and having fun with this all week. <laughs> Obviously, everybody watching this knows we do this for fun, and we're just out here having a good time. And the most important thing, guys, is, is the love for the community and the love for MMA. You know, all forms of combat sports. We have Nikki Rod. We have boxers, Teofimo Lopez. Our goal this year into 2024 and why we did this is to start bringing some, some exposure to the past and the present, but at the same time to show you guys the media that we're doing here for Jackson and Jackson Podcast is to highlight athletes, people that care about their sport, people that care about each other in the community. So you'll be seeing more from motocross to skating. Uh, we'll also be doing some NBA and MLB. We just signed two huge athletes. Blake Snell just won the Cy Young Award. Ellie Dela Cruz, one of the youngest, most impactful players in MLB. Jock Peterson, one of the best hitters, Julian Araujo on Barcelona. We also have a bunch of athletes in other sports, right? So we're very excited to kind of go down that road and tie, tie in all these sports and all these athletes together because that's one thing we don't see a lot. We just launched our skate team, Ryan Sheckler, so, uh, Paul yeah. Rodriguez, Gustavo. Ryan Sheckler is the GOAT. Robert, he's the GOAT. I mean, that guy started it all at 13 years old. He had a show on TV, and he was one of the first to do reality TV. Mm -hmm. So definitely I hope that everybody that's watching the podcast channel and Jackson Podcast You'll be seeing a lot more of Ryan Checkler. You'll be seeing a lot more of Rampage and TJ. Hopefully this year in 2024, we'll be using a lot of uh, shows with TJ to react to fights. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, can you come back and do some reaction with, with yeah, me as well? Of course, yeah. yeah. And um, I, I want to do a um, full disclosure. If I make fun of your favorite fighter or you <laughs> as a fighter, just know I'm just having fun. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. take nothing, I don't, none, none personally unless I really don't like you in person. Just DM him <laughs> and he's down to fight. We'll put together a ring in here and he'll come get some. Awesome. <laughs> I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't gonna stop him. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out TJ on Instagram. Check out Rampage on Instagram and follow Jackson Podcast. I'm Bear DiGidio. Thank you guys for real. Thank you.